location today. We're, we're in the mix in Sunny Stone Market. It's a charity designed for young people, um, giving them opportunities and, and helping them through an absolute uh, myriad of problems, really, with social media, etc. Um, and so I think it's really important. They, they of course, have an award-winning cafe here called Cabbages and Kings, which I would recommend. The breakfast look absolutely amazing. Uh, and we are here on behalf of the VORP studio. That's right, they have their own recording studio here with green screens, instruments. So if you're ever in need of that sort of thing, Sunny Stone Market, at the mix. And this is the Dean Bonus Podcast. Um, coming your way now. Welcome you guys, thanks for joining us again on Talk of the Town, your Upshire Town podcast. And for those lucky enough to be watching on YouTube, you can see who our special guest is, our second special guest. It's, uh, it's all happening here. For those listening on various uh, podcast software, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Buzzsprout, I don't think I've missed any else. Um, no, 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 you're not going to You can obviously hear in a second who our special guest is, but we are pleased to be, to be joined by Interest Town's youngest uh, hat trick scorer, still holding that record. Uh, in Mr. Dean Bowditz, thank you for, for joining us today. How are you, first and foremost? I'm all right. Yeah, you're sounding fine for our, our pre conversation, so I'm really looking forward to, to getting into the podcast. But nice journey down from, from MK this morning. Yeah, yeah, Saturday morning's all right. Yeah, yeah you thought through, it was kind. Through rush hours, not so, not so kind, but um, yeah, Saturday mornings are absolutely fine. Weather conditions, I suppose. People drive a bit slower than normal, but. Got here eventually. It's only Perfect. an hour. It's only an hour yeah. off. You are. It is if you drive. I just got. A, I just got a new car, which which helped my back a little bit. As oh, yeah, <laughs> as I can appreciate. Yeah, as, yeah. Trying to sort of help help my with my age, trying to sort the car out a little bit because I, I had a smaller car before, so now I've got a slightly bigger car. Don't say you're old. We're all the same age. It's <laughs> <laughs> like in football terms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I, I do some uh, computer uh, football manager guides for for YouTube. And I've been looking at a couple of clubs, and most of their objectives start saying things like, don't sign players under the age of 30. And I start going, what? That's not old. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm 30, you know? Like, That's not over, old. you mean over yeah. the age of 30? Over the age of 30, yeah, sorry, yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's like, don't say things like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be perfectly honest, that's been my struggle finding a club. Yes. <laughs> when, oh. I, when I first got released, it was a case of you go and talk to clubs and yeah, anyone under thirty, no chance. So, did you did you talk to many clubs after the yeah, release? Yeah, yeah, spoke to quite a few. I mean, I'm sure we'll go into it with well, the birth, birth, birth of my new son and stuff, and it's kind of all clashed at the same time. So, um, yeah, there were some huge decisions for me to make, and some that I, I've not regretted any of them, but some that you know I might have chosen slightly differently if my son hadn't come along. So, so was location the drawback really in terms of yeah. clubs in this area? Is there not? The, the higher up the pyramid, they're not that many, really, is there? Um, no. Ipswich, Colchester, Norwich, MK. It's probably I'm not sure where that high up the pyramid is anymore, to be honest. Well, we're still you know, a bit further up than Lower Colchester. Than you know. yeah. <laughs> and as you can hear, I'm joined by Mr. Robbie Davies. How are you today? I'm well. Yourself? I'm very well. I hear you were out on the town last night. Only for a few lemonades. Please, oh. Pleasantly correct, lemonades. So you actually restrained yourself because you were meeting a... a, a, a I'll leave a future judge. How do I look? Yeah, I did worry that he would look absolutely uh, like death warmed up on camera. Just lemonade? You just lemonade, yeah. Okay. For, for, <laughs> for, for, for political reasons. Okay. For the podcast and was, reasons. And you were still right. late? Yeah. I mean... Lemonade's tough I mean, stuff. if we were doing it at 8 o'clock, I'd expect, I'd expect that. <laughs> yeah. But it's quite late in the morning. Yeah, still. definitely got over it now. Oh, you I, just I, have, yeah. have one in the morning, then you're sorted, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Before you drive. Is that, is, is, is that a pro tip? <laughs> no, it's not. No, no, that's just from my friends. Oh, it's cool later on. Yeah. We may have on the podcast coming yeah, up. Wow. And I'm joined by my, my other colleague, Mr. Neil Mills. How are we? Not too bad. Yeah, we're well. You're looking forward to getting into the... Definitely. Today? Yep. Yeah. It, you are his absolute favourite player in the whole world. We were putting the list together. He was like, I want Dean. And we were like, yeah, we want Dean as well. Yeah. I was busy working. You phoned me up and said, guess who I've got. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, when we were speaking, you agreed. I was like, boom. Nice. I said, there, Neil straight away. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so he, has, he has watched the DVDs last night. He's gone through. Re-remind uh, himself. Yeah. And uh, he's coming. Oh, why? Oh, why? Right, right, right. <laughs> he's coming beaming this morning. So I'm really, you know, he's really looking forward to it, I think. Yeah, it's well, good. Hopefully, hopefully, I can uh, <laughs> live up to my yeah. expectations. But. So, obviously, Town of this weekend playing in the FA Cup, playing yep. Coventry. First and foremost, I'll, ask the, I'll just ask the guys very quickly, how do you feel that's going to go? Do you think we're going to see any 
any main players in the in the team? And, and do you think we're going to actually win a second cup game? I mean, that's a shock. But do you I, see I was surprised enough we won the first game, to be honest. Um, I don't know. I think um, I still see him resting most of the big names as such. Mm-hmm. It, there's clearly not much priority for any, with any of the cups, so... It's just, it's just another game. See winning? Just another game, though, to be honest. Yourself? Probably get to a replay just to make it complicated, wouldn't it? Yeah, playing commentary three times in a week, or, or whatever yeah. it's going to be. Yeah, because we've got commentary in the league coming up. Mm-hmm. Commentary only tomorrow, tomorrow. And if you get a replay, they'll probably sign sandwiches somewhere yeah. in between. You're obviously somebody who's played in the FA Cup. Uh, what, what's your overriding memory of the FA Cup? Have you got one that sticks out to you through your career? Big um, Lynch or elsewhere? Probably... I mean, it's difficult to, it's so hard because my memory's never been great and doing a podcast is probably not the best thing when your memory's not great. But there's only one. <laughs> don't there's tell only, me that now. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. But it, it was just difficult. I mean, I, yeah, I played in quite a few games, you know, because normally they do bring in like the young blood and stuff mm. to try and sort of bring them through. But the one that stands out for me was actually at MK Dons and I okay. scored, we had a full house. Um, I mean, at the time, I don't think they had the upper tier. So full house for just the lower tier was about twenty thousand, but um, we played QPR, and I scored. We drew one all week. We conceded right in the last minute, but it was that feeling of actually scoring in front of you know a full house there, and it was and we didn't really get a full house at all uh, no. with, with the support from you know from from the local area. So to get a, to get that first time in an FA Cup game against who was a Premier League team at the time, yeah. you know, was, was good yeah. to score against them. And it was my left foot as well, so that helps. <laughs> <laughs> and why do you think the local so. area haven't really gotten behind? Uh, Say again. Why do you feel the local area haven't really yet taken to... It's a new club. You know, it's a new, it's a, it's still, a new yeah. club, you know, when, when you, if you, yeah. Yeah, if you, if you think it's probably still only sort of 15 years old, you know, so if you look at the actual, the, the guys and girls who have been born in that time, they're still very young, you know, they're going yeah. with their parents and their parents are probably like, like Spurs supporters or Arsenal supporters, yeah. Man United <coughs> supporters, whatever it may be. So to actually get that kind of support is very difficult because yeah. their alliance is somewhere else, whereas yeah. these, this new blood coming through, they're the real supporters in, in, in my eyes, so that actually when they get older and they're having their kids and stuff like that, so in the next sort of 10, 15, 20 years, you should start to see attendances hopefully go up from. Well, they're not good. Big stadium to fill, aren't they? They have. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. They're, 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 they're certainly confident, I think, of that happening. Well, you'd like to think they are. They're building stadiums. Because it may not come up later on in the podcast. What was it like working for a, a chairman such as. Um, <coughs> Pete Winkleman. Yeah, that's yeah. The one. yeah. I thought that was the name. I didn't want to say it in case yeah, yeah. it was wrong. <laughs> no, no. Obviously, he's got a bit of a reputation in the press, especially as, a, as a, an eccentric trap. Yeah. Is he as eccentric as he? Uh, uh, couldn't be any more spot on. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's... So what was that like working for a guy? So you know, like, like that really, who was obviously very prevalent in the media. Yeah. Um, was it interesting? Because obviously, you, you came from Ipswich, uh, where the ownership was a bit different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Evans took over. In my last, I think, yeah. in my last year. And before maybe. that, you had the FA um, mogul, as it were. <laughs> Sheep 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 was, it was, I loved him. Yeah. I actually liked him. And he was great because he would always communicate with the younger players as well and to sort of okay. look up at someone like him, you know, and, and for such a young player to sort of communicate with uh, an owner, a chairman, and stuff like that was. And that's when I first, we first, we had to show respect towards our elders and stuff so Mr Chairman was always we always called him Mr Chairman there was nothing else so as my career's gone on I'd always call my chairman Mr Chairman and it just got it was quite funny because other players would be like what are you calling him Mr Chairman for I was like, it's just a respect thing I have to call him Mr Chairman if he's the chairman it's so was that a thing including uh, at Ipswich or was that a wider footballing thing that was I don't know actually I think I only know from what my own experience you know so Mr Chairman was what I was brought up calling the chairman and you, you saw know? him regularly then yeah, quite quite a lot, really. Yeah, it's, and I never saw Mr. Evans. You know, he's a bit elusive. Really, yeah, nobody yeah, has. a bit bit more elu- nobody else. <laughs> yeah, as as far as I'm aware. Well, it's but, interesting hearing a player say that because mm-hmm. obviously, do you feel that helped your de- your development and helped you settle into a big club, seeing people like the chairman every yeah, day? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, because it wasn't just that; it was breeded throughout the whole club. And I don't know whether you've sort of come across this kind of conversation before, but when I was 13, 14 and we would train on a Saturday and sometimes the first team wouldn't have a game on a Saturday but they would come in for training or for a cool down or something like that so what they would do is they'd not make them because I think it was just the whole family club feel of Ipswich Town Football Club Mm. and I remember sitting next to Marcus Stewart 
And I mean, I just couldn't believe my luck, you know, because he came in and they, they would actually, we'd all be in just having our beans on toast with our parents and that. Then the first two would walk in, it'd just be like, wow. wow. But they wouldn't just walk past, they'd come and sit next to you. I and mean, you'd have people just dotted around the room, yeah. sitting next to all the young, young players, the young blood coming through. And if that was an inspiration in itself, then it was incredible, so. Wow, brilliant. And did you feel, come back to the FA Cup, did you feel the expectation from the football club that you know you knew you were playing for a club that had obviously won it mm. uh, was that something as a young player coming through you were aware of was it spoken to you by anybody uh, yeah I mean it's I was part so I, I feel I was part of the back end of the old school era yes you know so the old school era were just mad on it you know it was a case of this is one of the biggest cup competitions in the world in their eyes, mm -hmm. in the club's eyes, in the yeah. fans' eyes, and everywhere, everyone's eyes, and it still is part of, especially some of the fans. You know, yeah. the older fans are just, and they still have that passion. And so, to be young, coming in through the old school era, being told that you just got that buzz, that drive. So, I'm still trying to say to a lot of the younger players when I've been playing an FA Cup game, and and managers are kind of trying to treat it a little bit more like giving other players a chance, giving like them the minutes, like the League Cup, yeah, and it's not, it's difficult because uh, you want to say to these young boys, look, you've got a chance, if not the next round, the round after that, of playing yeah. against some of the best players in the world, mm. there's no other cup like that, you know, so why, why not just give it a go, and, but managers, you know, they're, you know, rightly or wrongly, they're, they're trying to do their best in, say, just the League, or whatever it may be, but and that's why you probably find some of the older school managers might say, well, well, we'll give it a go then, because this is still one of the best clubs yeah. in the So over your career, have you seen the change by the clubs in terms of priorities? Mm. Do, you still, do you feel the FA Cup has lost its sparkle at professional level with, with players, or do players still look at it with the same way you No, do? no, I think they have. I think it's lost it. Yeah, and how would you get that back then? You know, you're, you've played the game for many years, you've that's been difficult. involved with the game. Yeah. I gave you a blank bit of paper and said, make the FA Cup special again. Yeah. How would you achieve that? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Too many competitions. I don't know. In I, don't know. I mean, it's it's yeah. I don't know. The FA Cup moving cup games for for, for TV purposes yeah. or sem I mean, when I was growing up, semi finals were a bit apart. I was going to say that. It should never be yeah, a well yeah. You know, it added to the intrigue. Off. Neutral venue, but not quite the venue for the for the final. <clears throat> mm. Do you feel things like that have taken away from it, or do players not really put much into that? And it's more about other uh, outside areas in terms of managing real pressures. Yeah, uh, it's <laughs> it's so difficult to even say. I mean, I remember sort of getting knocked out of like a round two cup game and being almost being in tears because I knew that if we got through to the third round, that was like, and some of the young lads just getting shelled, getting changed, and off they go, and you just like you just wanna yeah. just wanna sort of shake them and be like, have you not realised what you just <laughs> missed out on here? And you'd be sixty minutes into the game, you'd be one nil down, but you're thinking, lads, come on, like we've got a chance here. Is that because you've got two league games, the cup games at that level? Because obviously you've got the least trophy. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if you're obviously championship or below, or certainly league one or below, you're looking at the least trophy now. Well, it's in Johnson's paint trophy, yeah. or whatever it's been yeah. called, Jusons, <laughs> the FA Cup, the League Cup. Then you've got forty six league games. Yeah. But you've also in the earlier rounds of the League Cup and the uh, FA Cup um, as well. Yeah, and I'd imagine a club such as MK, MK Dons, for example. Yeah. You haven't got the, the biggest squad in the world, so your younger players are probably playing a lot of those games as well. So are they looking at it as Wednesday night. Yeah, so yeah. Like probably. Yeah, Before. probably. It's, it's, uh, you've touched on something quite important there, really, haven't you? With, with so many different games going on, that's why it's so difficult for a manager because you kind of you will have your best 13, 14 players, maybe. Mm -hmm. you know. And so when it comes to 46 league games and you're trying to keep all these players fit, and I know it's difficult because... I mean, I've done the the FA, the Lincoln game. I've, I've done co-commentary, and it yeah. was and it was really great. But it was interesting to hear um, the views of Breno, especially when he was talking about you know changing so many players in one game. And I was trying to be devil's advocate and be like, you know, but he's got to, he has got to look after his best <laughs> I players. Listening, I was listening to that. Yeah, you know, he's got part. he's got to look after it, and and it's difficult because you need to give the fans what they want because they want to see their best players mm -hmm. and stuff, but. Also, you've got so many other games to worry about because at the moment they're doing so well, they want to continue that form, but it's difficult. Yeah. It's really and you feel money plays a part in it because obviously, especially for a club like Milton Mil Keynes Dons, but yeah. as well, promotion to the championship, it's worth something like nine, 10 million pounds, yeah. which to a club, any club, mm. is huge. So when they sit down at the start of the season, especially, you know, I mean, you played in the Carl Robinson, yes. right? Yeah. So when he sits down with, it, with the chairman, his priority is 
at least a top six finish. Yeah. So when you're looking at midweek games coming up in the league and you've got cup games and other cup games, they have to rotate, right? Mm-hmm. So the priorities are all different as opposed to, say, 20 years ago when uh, money wasn't such prevalent. Obviously, promotion was important, yeah. but money wasn't such that if you don't miss out on promotion, it's going to exactly be... Exactly right. Yeah, it's, it's, it, the money side of it is obviously had such importance now in, in football clubs with... And that's a player. Financial how did, stuff, how did you see that unraveling? Because obviously you you came into the game uh, when Sky were just starting to really get their foothold in football. You know, they had the NTL, um, is the NTL crash, the ITV digital ITV crash, digital things like that. Did you did you as a player recognise at the time what was going on in terms of the outside resources? Not really. <laughs> not really. Not really. As a as a younger player, just me personally, I just all I worried about was the football. It was just just took over your life so that any any outside kind of stuff just didn't really worry me so, so yeah. if you're a young player now you've got Instagram you've got Twitter yeah, Facebook yeah. you've got TV the TV then well you know I'm talking about more 24 <laughs> 7 <laughs> newsreel I'm not sure it was black and white I'm not sure <laughs> yeah. now but no, yeah, you're yeah, talking I'm more 24 7 newsreel you know it's more in your face than it ever was before yeah do you think your career would have gone any differently had you had those outside pressures then because obviously back then we didn't have any social media, we didn't have no. Instagram, we didn't have a brand, such as some players have, especially you know, the top players in the Premier mm. League, with Jesse Lingard, for example, T- you know, clothing lines coming up, yeah, their front yeah. centre. Do you think your your t- your career would have gone any differently? Do, I don't, do you know what? You... I think it might have been a detriment to, to me personally, because I'm not a I'm not massive on designer clothes, I'm not massive on anything kind of flashy. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of these younger players they, they yeah. do, they they see on Instagram how they think they should look or the new newest pair of trainers that come out and they want to have them and that's that's it's not a problem as long as it don't affect your football I don't have any problem with it but I think that might have affected me because I might have seen sort of like my mate doing all this stuff and I'm just thinking I don't really want to do that and then it might have got to me a little bit I don't I, I can't really say no. how it would have affected me because we didn't question. have that we didn't have that and I, I suppose the biggest thing I had was making my debut and being on the back page of every newspaper the next day yeah. and that, that for me was excitement I didn't understand because I was 16 I didn't understand the pressures of it you know but as you get older you start to actually I don't know you start to listen to things that you shouldn't listen to and it might have just started to affect your game so social media might have affected me a lot more than maybe some others so what, I was going to say do you think yeah, the young players now like you, you mentioned Lingard I know obviously he's not United but they seem to have it all like very quickly before like, I wouldn't say that he's played out of his skin outstanding for year after year do you know what I mean he's, he's sort of got it all without having done much for which it which is what Roy Keane says I mean he's still playing for Man United so he's yeah. not a bad player that's, that's not no 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 not. but you know what I'm saying he's not he's not pushed into uh, titles right. or, yeah not, that's uh, what I'm saying right, yeah. Yeah, exactly yeah. which you know obviously you burst onto the scene which we're, you, we're coming on to you brilliantly so you've linked that up <laughs> really well no problem and it, it may <laughs> yeah make on the same for yourself you know you burst onto the scene you're the, the hottest sensation at Ipswich you've got uh, Joe Rule giving you plaudit yeah. after plaudit so you may have had the Dean Bowden branding line, you know, you may have had the T-shirts and the jackets and the and the cars, but yeah. you, were you more of, are you more of a motivated player or yeah. were your head down? Yeah, yeah. For, I've normally try to be like one of the first in, last out kind of people. You know, I used to have a laugh and that. I can't, and I still do. I can't. I couldn't. I couldn't. I don't think I could do a job where I wouldn't enjoy doing it. Sure. You know, and even now, going into the next stage of my career, whatever it may be. I want to enjoy it because yeah. otherwise, it, what's the what's the point in my eyes? You know, it's, so it's so I was going in. I remember. I remember. Oh, I don't know. It was angry really going off subject. But I remember Mark Noble when he was at the club, and he's gone on to do incredible things. Yeah, Mr. But the West Ham. He was he was in before me and left before, out after me. So I used to tag along with him because I thought, what a person to kind of like mm-hmm. you know follow. And he's only a couple of years older than me. So I said, well, maybe. No, no he's, he's same age as us. Same age. Yeah, so, yeah, okay, he's, he's, young, he's younger. 32, 33. Right, okay. He's been there for a month, month, six weeks. Like he two, wasn't two even months. there that long, but the, Brief the impact he had, you know, he was dragging older players out, you know, who were just sitting having a, having a coffee, you know, get, that was their warm up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah have a coffee. You know, and he was out there, we, we was out there playing That's tennis, the doing, doing keep you ups, like bringing some, like, oh, come on, let's go out early. Like, and do so, something. even at a young age, you can really see the leadership. Of, oh, of a man coming yeah, through. Massively. He's so. about front, didn't he? I'm sure he played up front for us. Mark Noble? Mm, no, he played midfield with Simon Walton. Yeah. No, I thought he was up front, maybe. Because when he came in, Simon, him and Simon Walton, Simon Walton was, yeah. was the highly rated oh, player Walton, yeah. at God. the time. I um, about obviously, him. they've had completely different, different paths. Yeah. Would injuries, you, I think he had quite a few injuries in his He time did, there, so yeah. And, and uh, obviously, if you're Sam Mark Noble, was that sort of man, 
the drive, maybe. You know, yeah. first you, you can see out. on the pitch that Mark Noble was a uh, determination and effort was a key part of his game. But you know what? He loved it. Mm -hmm. He loved doing it. He didn't do it because he just like he done it with a smile on his face. He always done it because he just loved doing it. And you can still I still see things on him now when he's doing. He might be doing a little interview or something like that, and it's just a little snippet. And he's just he's having a bit of a laugh. Like to him, it's just fun. But because he just loves loves doing it and doing it relentlessly, he's got to where he's got. Very yeah. He loves his football. You yeah. know, and that's what you, that's what you need to have, really, isn't it? Some yeah. players don't, and some players do. So your debut was obviously a big one, Norwich. Hmm. Um, what, what what was that like? Being told by Joe that first performance you in the squad for Norwich. Yeah. What was that like? <sighs> Well, I think I got in the squad through default. I think I remember <laughs> what, it, what actually happened was the the age group, the year above me, were, were due their exams or something like that at that college. And so we had a few injuries in the first team and they went down the next sort of level into like the under like 19s mm -hmm. or something like that. And it was a bit like, you know, well, we've... Not necessarily, no disrespect to that age group, but we've not got anyone that like we think might be able to sort of like step in and even just be on the bench. Bridge but they're the doing their exams, and that was important to the club as well. Like the the, the, the going to school, and making sure you get your qualification. Looking after you, yeah. yeah, and it was important back then uh -huh. as it is now. And then so they looked down again, and I was just like, you know, well, who can we pick out? Then? <laughs> <laughs> and they just sort of knew that I was doing pretty well, just. You know, scoring goals at that level, and it's no, it's completely different to first team level. But I said, let's just give him a chance. You know, it's, you know, we'll stick him in, and I just trained from. Did Monday. you train with the first team yeah, prior to yeah, that? Yeah, I played. I trained the whole week leading up to the game, and even that in itself was just, I was just didn't know what to do. I was just running around like I was just told when if you nutmeg someone, don't call it because <laughs> you 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 you'll get your leg broken. <laughs> kind of thing, yeah. especially especially if you use Jim Majilton. Yeah. <laughs> do not mex <laughs> Jim Majilton because you will get snapped afterwards. So um, yeah, that was that was probably the only advice I got. Yeah, and it was just a case of go, look, lad, go and enjoy yourself. You know, this this might not last. Mm. You know, you just go go and take the moment, enjoy it. And luckily, I sort of took it. Yeah, so you came on. Mm. That's the first. That's the first. That must have been obviously. a cauldron of noise. All right. Yeah, that place on that place. If when they're up for it. What yeah. was it like playing there? As a young player coming well, on. Well, I'll start off before that. So it was we we were travelling to the game. We had police escort. And could you imagine sixteen-year-olds sitting on the bus? Like, you have to team. Being told where to sit as well because you can't sit in anyone's seat. By the way, you sit, <laughs> if you walk on a bus sit on anyone's seat, it's like, wait. Is it up. that regimented? Yeah, go and make me coffee. Go and make me this. Like just <laughs> wow. just about to sit down. It's like, wait. Do you know? Go and get another coffee. Like so you're down the front, were you? Yeah, I was just by the coffee machine, <laughs> just making <laughs> making teas and coffees for everyone. And then we go into the game, police escort. And I'm thinking, oh my god, like and getting hurled abuse at the bus, and probably I can't remember, but we probably had stuff thrown at the bus as well. And, and I'm uh, pretty bunch up there. Yeah, what am I? What am I coming into here? And and it was just uh, the excitement of it just took over. You know, I mean, they. Uh, I could imagine, you know, Tommy Miller and Fabian Wilness and people like that. They sort of had their head kind of on the game and were like ready, ready for it. But I was just like in awe, like just, like, what do I do now? Do I do I get changed now? <laughs> what do I do? Did anyone put their arm around you and and guide you through? Look um, after you, say, you know. Yeah, probably out of everyone, probably someone, someone inconspicuous, like someone like Alan Armstrong. Yeah, you know, would would have probably done it. I don't remember exactly, but no, I remember because I remember what he'd done. I'm probably jumping ahead a little bit. When I scored my hat trick, I scored two before half time, and he was the one with his arm around me. And I'd kind of essentially taken his place because he was like an older player, yeah, yeah, and I was a young player, and I'd started in front of him. And he was the one that put his arm around me to say, "Go and get your hat trick, son." You know, and that was oh, it. Cool. And so that inspiration from someone like him, knowing that he's probably coming towards the end of his career, mm -hmm. and I'm just starting. It's just the way that the, that was the way the team was. That's what that's what the squad was all about. So, so someone like him would have just probably just like mm. sat next to me, made me feel at home. Music was on, you know, just you know, take, oh, like, just enjoy, it, take it all in, kind of thing. Because and I mean Norwich, I mean uh, uh, what a start. Absolutely. Kind of and you won. Yeah. What was it like in the dressing room after the game? Did anyone? Did Joe say anything to you? No. Not did, really. 
It was wasn't. It? it was no. It was people were just. I just remember being patted on the head about three hundred times by people. <laughs> I don't know who it was because it's like the classic. I mean, I still remember the photo, but, and and I remember him doing it, but just standing on the sideline, just him rubbing me head, just saying, "Go on, stand on, you go." Like yeah. just going. Enjoy it. Seen that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, go go and enjoy yourself. There was no pressure. There was no like you know because full house Carrow Road. You know, kind of. Was it? Was it nil nil? It was nil nil. Yeah. Yeah, I us us up too. I'll do research. Yeah, I remember, <laughs> you, I remember you getting to, yeah. to the to the byline. Yeah, their player pulled up. Yeah, I think who their player was. They looked a little pulled up, didn't it? Yeah, hamstring or something. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember that happening. That was. Well, I remember, that was I remember the, the cutback. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Oh yeah, second one was the, the yeah, second one was I started yeah. bent you through and he just yeah, yeah. one on one and with the hat on. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. You know that's the overriding memory of that one. Yeah. Is a stupid hat he's got on. <laughs> Yeah. Was that the well, one where was that when Bennett was through? Didn't they uh, announce something on the tally? Did I read that somewhere? As he was through on goal, obviously he's bearing yeah, no, down. What, to try and um, uh, apparently, I, obviously I wasn't there, but someone was telling me that they wow. just as he was coming in to sort of narrowing down the angle, they, they put the tally. Could the owner something. of <laughs> yeah, something like that? Yeah. Would be a Norwich <laughs> trick. <laughs> Nor- Norwich would try that definitely. Because obviously that, that scene you were describing there with the pat on the head, yeah. you 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 do look a bit nervous, Dean. <laughs> yeah, were you not feeling no. it? No? No, it wasn't. No. no. You were just excited. I, I mean, I, I apologise, my face <laughs> no. showed up. But I, I was pricking it, I was just, the dressing room yeah. still. No, I was just, I think I was looking at the floor and he was just, just rubbing my head like, go on, just kind of enjoy yourself. I've played the dog and duck and I got a bit scared, let alone yeah. you know, in front of Carrow Road and I all think those. This is an age thing. Like, I mean, I'm, my, my little brother's sort of 10 years younger than me. Ben, right? No, Ben's me older. Sorry. Sam's me, Sam's me younger. Tell me research, though. And, <laughs> and he, um, he, he at 16, I mean, if I, if, I couldn't imagine him going out in front of 30,000 people and trying to play a game of football at 16. Imagine. I remember looking at him going, like, no, I was that age and I was doing that. I just, I don't, it just, yeah, it is. Now we're looking at some of, some of that age group thinking, you know, how would you have coped? I don't know how I did. I just went out and just played football, and that was it. And you, you must block out the crowd because you would have been, you know, sworn at, called whatever. Yeah. Um, do you, as a player, through your career, do you ever really listen to the crowd? Have you ever really tuned them in, um, or is it something as a player that things like the, the tannoy? Do you just it's you and the pitch, it's you and your team. Yeah. Everything else is just say. Uh, if you have any player come on in and say, no, no, you just block it out, you just concentrate they're on the game, but they're completely lying. <laughs> yeah, completely lying. I mean, it's different. So it's different when you're. So I've had it hundreds of times when you're warming up. Yeah. You know, you're warming up, ready to come on, and you're just getting hurled abuse at. <laughs> Down the touchline. And, and they're, they're the funniest ones to listen to because you kind of just look around, and you see the type of people that are hurling abuse, you can't help but laugh at them. Yeah. And that, that annoys them even more. <laughs> <laughs> so, but when you are on the pitch, you, do, you hear it. Of course you hear it, but you don't, you don't completely block it out. If, you, any, if you're blocking it out, you must be deaf. Do any stick out? <laughs> any stick out? Huh? Does any stick out? Is there, was there one you've heard you thought, that's original? Uh, the Den. <laughs> The dead. Uh, yeah, okay. Middle, Good yeah, old Millwall. Deep Duck South. Yeah, That's a yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. It, the fact it was like a twelve-year-old boy as well. Was probably, <laughs> yeah, I can't. I wouldn't be able to say what he said. He's no doubt. Oh, really? no, I remember looking around. And his dad was just patting him on the back. Like, oh, that's son. <laughs> <laughs> I went. Some people, place so. to uh, play or visit that. Yeah. It was, uh, and I couldn't help but uh, something to do with like you know you uh, shouldn't you be at school but. With, with all the swear words next to it and around it kind of thing and I look around and it's no older than 12 you know dad going to love it son <laughs> tattoos sovereign rings yeah, you know, yeah. I mean yeah stereotypical I know but you know I mean don't get me wrong my family's here there so it's fine yeah, they've, got, they've got a head of a fan base but when you're not a Millwall player no. I mean actually some Millwall players get dogs abused there as well mm. but I mean I, yeah I've got some there brilliant so you came through of some of the Golden generation, really. You know, Benty, Ambrose, Westlake, yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was it like coming through the academy? Obviously, you won the Dale Roberts uh, Award, mm. which you have to talk to me about because it's not an award that you see branded about very often anymore. So, what was that? Yeah. Why did you win it? And what was it like coming through with such players like that? Really. Well, obviously, it was sad when Dale Absolutely. passed away, and Town to, to honour to honour someone like that with an award for a young player is was incredible you know mm. and to be to be awarded it was was amazing it was more just a case of um, acknowledging a young player that's sort of doing well that was it really just sort of acknowledging someone because we didn't really have that kind of that award but you had a young player as part of like the first team you know, I think Bentley might have won some mm-hmm. like, you know, along his way Ambrose as well but to uh, acknowledge a, a youth team player who's doing well 
that was what that was all about, and, and it was and it was great to win it. You know, especially after knowing knowing the man for not only shortly, but you know, he was such a legend at the club. And, Mr. Ipswich, really. Yeah, you know. so it's yeah incredible to get that award, but. Um, I don't know if they still. I don't know if they still I don't do it. That's so, the thing. No. So it was that's sad. Yeah, you know, it's you, not something I've heard. If, if it is given out, if it's I don't know. I, I can't. No, if it is given out, then it's not something that's ever now publicized. Yeah, it should be. It, absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. when, when we do the research, I remember the award and I remember the man. Yeah, but it's not an award I've heard recently. It's a shame. It is. Mm. Um, which is why I kind of brought it up because I thought you know just to refresh town fans' minds yeah. and if you can get it back out in the in the open. You know, you can start maybe putting pressure on the club to. To, to well, announce I hope, yeah, I hope so. I mean, look, the club has changed a lot since I've been there. I get that. But you have to want to play it. But yeah, you people have to, have especially that. young players, because they're still renowned for bringing young players through. Yeah. And and like I said, being part of the golden era about bringing some of those those players through was it was exceptional, you know. And and they're still trying to do it now. So to try and recognise a specific young player would be good. Would be great because then it gives up. It's not just that. It's not just for that that player. Mm. It's for everyone else around him, you know. Everyone else going. I want to. I want to win that award. I want to do that. You know. I want to be the next mm. whoever it may be coming Absolutely. through. So. And obviously, as you said, young players still it, which is such a huge thing. And um, we've heard so much about you know Luke Chambers in the press being you know a great captain, father figure kind of. Yeah, taking young players in. See that, yeah. How was Jim McGowan as a captain for you coming through? Do you know what I loved and I hated him? <laughs> <laughs> hate, is, hate is a really strong word, and I don't hate him, like because I do, I, I did love him. But when you made a mistake, mm-hmm. the first voice you heard was Jim's, <laughs> like, and it was you. You were scared of it because it was so loud. Like I, I remember being on a pitch and I'd be screaming at someone, and be like, "I didn't hear you. You need to scream louder." Jim would literally just speak, and you could hear him from like <laughs> one side of the pitch to the other because you just had that voice. That. But that was the th- that was the thing as a younger player you were kind of you wanted to make sure you'd done things well because you're worried about him having a go at you <laughs> but then the best thing about Jimbo was he would always if he had a go at you it was for a reason because he knew you could do better so he'd always put an arm around you afterwards so he would have been one of the ones at Carrow Road putting your arm around you right. because as much as you were scared of him you also loved him because he'd say look the reason why I'm doing this is because I know you can do it better so next time try and do it like this or do this or do this so, so he's the father but, figure yeah. So like maybe a Luke Chambers, he might not be as cutting mm-hmm. as Jim, you no. know, and he'll he'll accept that because that's that's what that's why he had such a good career because he he was so such a winner, you know. But he wanted to breed that to other players as well. He demanded a hundred percent every time. Uh, massively, yeah. But you were scared of him because of that. But then that's why I think when he went into the manager side of things, because he went from player to manager so quickly. You could already see it happening when he was on the pitch, I guess, about sounds like he's yeah, already managing the Yeah, around it, it, but it was difficult from the squad's point of view, seeing yeah. Jim suddenly being the manager. You How know, did you react to it as a squad? How did we well, yeah, react to it? Well, we didn't mind. We, we didn't mind it. I didn't mind it because I knew he wanted me to do well, you know, but it was just things obviously didn't quite work out with results, so then he had to sort of try certain things. So I thought I was going to be given loads of chances in the gym, and then I just got dropped completely after a few games. We you talking did he tell me why? Yeah. Did he put an arm uh, sit you down? Na- well, not particularly. Um, that was the difference between him, him as a player and a manager was suddenly now being a manager he's got to deal with so many other outside things that he probably didn't realise as a player. Um, so actually putting his arm around a, an 18-year-old kid wasn't a priority of his. You know, whereas as a player, you can't, I don't know, it's different. Yeah, that's my next question. How, how did the two differ? And did his man management change from being, you know, when he was captain or... You know, you've played yeah. under some managers of yeah. various yeah. Uh, degrees. Yeah. Uh, Carl Robinson, for example. Yeah. I imagine he's probably a very people person. Mm-hmm. I may be completely wrong. Yeah. I might be a media that perception is. that's built yeah. up. Um, whereas, is Jim more standoffish? Was he sit you down, have a chat, have a coffee? Yeah. You know, how did how did he manage? Because obviously, there's so many stories from that era, mm. like Amsterdam, for example, uh, with some of the younger players and some of the older players going. But not being allowed to go. Yeah, that was after my time. But yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. this it's that is that type of was there a communication between the management and dressing room? And if it was, how was it? Um, it's hard to say, like, because as a captain, if he has a go at you and doesn't put your arm around you, you kind of just go like, oh, I'd be alright in the morning, yeah. kind of thing. And then he'd come in the morning and he'll still demand off you, but he he will just like calm down a bit. But when he's your manager. 
like and he makes those key decisions of starting year and developing year and this and the other it's just a, it's different mm-hmm. it's, so you kind of like you stop you, you don't want to like when he comes in in the morning after having a go at you you'll be like you right this morning Jim? <laughs> <laughs> so a bit extra. <laughs> Everything all right, mate? <laughs> so a bit Whereas, as a manager, you couldn't do that no. because it just it it mug you off even more, kind of thing, or whatever it may be. So it's yeah, it's difficult. It's, so it's head down, work hard. Yeah, and and I found it difficult. I think it's like the slightly. I mean, look, like Darren Curry was his best mate, you know, and 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 yeah, he lost way. his position as a as a key player because he just went off him, you yeah. know, and. I mean, Mr. Chop himself, like with Darren Curry, like he was, he was exceptional when he played alongside Jim, and then Jim became manager, and they kind of like found a bit. They of did. I mean, I've spoke to Darren Curry recently, and they're good mates. They're back to where they were, but he found it difficult as in, as a manager being a mate of his. You know, someone's got heels on. Yeah. And um, <laughs> big old yeah. heels. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. Uh, and yeah, so. It, changes massively when yeah. you become from a player to a manager and I think I wouldn't say he struggled because he would have been strong in his decisions mm-hmm. but I found it difficult he just yeah and obviously dealing with some of the players maybe you found tough conversations difficult would that be right to say like players with Darren Curry instead of sitting down with Darren and saying you know it's not personal it's this 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 yeah. perhaps he felt he couldn't so it was just a simple case of drop and then it yeah. festers maybe I, I don't I'm just in the dressing room I don't know but yeah I think his, his decisions would have been so like so strong mm. you know look you're not going to play today and be like no Gaffer why not play it it's like mate you're not playing not like not yeah. like look, the reason why you're not so playing how many is it's just like you're not, you're not playing and so it was like players would then not take well to that for whatever reason I mean I, I usually would just I'd accept all decisions that come my way because there's always a reason behind it so if you're not playing it's like okay like, I'll keep trying harder yeah. kind of thing. and then if I weren't playing for a long period of time then I'd be like right I need to go online you, know, you, can imagine him, play. you can imagine him being like the sort of, I don't want to say confrontational type, but you can yeah. imagine like if you or player X had gone back to him and said, well, I'm not here, he would have probably had yeah. it out there. He probably would have had a go, and he was so good at arguing. <laughs> so <laughs> he was so good at involved in yeah, a few yeah. and yeah. stuff yeah. over the years. I, imagine, I'm sure he'd admit, like, even, if, even if he was wrong, he was right. You know, <laughs> Which you know is what, what most fans so, are like. Right? Yeah. Uh, but how did he, was it a real culture change from Joe, who is... I don't know, maybe I'm wrong again, but maybe more of a granddad figure, you know, sit you down, have a chat, have a laugh, yeah. more hands-on people person. Yeah. Was it a big trip? Well, I didn't realise, funny enough, I didn't realise how good Joe Robert was as a people person until I had other managers. Right. You know, because he yeah. was my first manager. Yeah. So I just used to hear him all the time in training, just target. He's just he's, His biggest word was target, as a striker himself, you know, I mean... He was just always screaming at your target, and like if you missed the target, it was just like, was hey, no target, target, and he's just like, just calm down, <laughs> like, stop having to go at me. But actually, like he was, his people person skills were just impeccable, yeah. you know. And and until like, and I'm not saying Jim's no, work, no. but only because I found it difficult because of maybe his kind of confrontation. I was a bit like a bit more timid, like, like sorry Jim, kind of thing. And then I, that would be it. Whereas other players would rise to that and love it would love yeah. the fact that manager would be confrontational and yeah. Jim would probably then respect them players more yeah. for having to go back yeah you know what I mean? yeah. And yeah exactly yeah. yeah well he's got a bit of fire in but you were still a young man with respect for the player and the captain and then yeah. suddenly the manager so you, you well that, but having been coming through that kind of like I was saying about Mr Chairman you know yes. he was our captain you know, Jimbo like so if he had a go at me I would back down yeah you know whereas a new player coming in would be like well I might have a nap <laughs> <laughs> and you played with Drissa Diallo right? yeah yeah, yeah. Famous for table his, tennis king. Really? <laughs> okay. Famous for his throw-ins. Um, yeah, right. With, with fans. Yeah. Were the players aware that the fans were starting to get like a bit of a cult status with his throw-ins? Was it a joke in training that he couldn't throw the ball? No, no. It was a joke. <laughs> I <laughs> forgot about that. Ball. Well, yeah. he, he couldn't. I, 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 do you know what? I'd forgotten about that because we, yeah, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't really take them. I, I just remember when he used to head the ball. You could hear it from probably like Norwich. <laughs> he was a great player, really good yeah. player. I mean, but we loved him for his. He was such a such a funny guy. Yeah. Um, and he, he still is a funny guy. And uh, but he, we used to have a table. I was just that's why I said it. Table tennis table. Yeah. And he'd been there every morning. Really. And he, and, he, and it was win, winning you stay on. And he'd be there from nine o'clock till we started training because he was just <laughs> so good. And, and no you one, think they no, work hard? No, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that that era, that era of that squad, you know, again, you know, we all got on well. We all like wanted to succeed and stuff because it was just we just loved each other. Is know, that the best dressing room you've been in? Um, 
No. No? No. I think... Which is the best position you've been in for, for, for love and that camaraderie and, you know... Pro- probably the, the promotion winning MK yeah. season, yeah. Because there was no... There was no big-time Charlies. There was... We used to socialise together, you know, old and young. Um, everyone had a respect for each other that if you did have an argument, again, there would just straight away be, you know, you'd both be apologising to each other, but then there was a demand of each other. It's just, yeah, it just all clicked. Balance was It right. all completely clicked. Youth with, youth with old, it just, it was brilliant. Whereas there were still pockets of, of that with Ipswich was there. There were still, you were all friends, yeah. best mates, but there were still pockets of individual groups. Is that, yeah, is that I, right I to I say? I think so, yeah. It's... Because it was a change of the guard, wasn't it, for the club? Yeah. You know, relegation, administration, new yeah. players. It was such a change. It's, I mean, we all we all got on. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but that, that, I think that that outside kind of stuff maybe took effect. Were the players a bit over their shoulder, looking at looking at the young players coming through and thinking, maybe I'm being moved on. And that's the thing, Alan Armstrong. As I just said, you know, he, it was different. Yeah. It was different that few years earlier where it was a case of it didn't matter whether you was playing or not, you wanted the team to do well. Mm-hmm. Whereas then you started to maybe get a few players in that were kind of who weren't playing who'd be like, I hope they lose today so I can get my chance. Yeah. And I remember actually when I was when I was younger, I remember sitting down with my agent and I weren't playing and I was I was I was getting dragged into it and I was fuming, I was thinking, you know, I hope they lose so I can get my chance. Yeah. And he went and he went, Do you know what? You're one hundred percent wrong. He said, you should not be thinking like that. He goes, he was um, Teddy Sheridan's agent. Oh, wow. And uh, Teddy used to think like that when he was at like Millwall and stuff like that. And he's at, he had a hell of a career. He was an incredible player. And I used to look up to him. He was my, him and Michael O were like my, my, my players I wanted to be like. Two completely different players, yeah, but yeah. I love a mixture Sheridan. of the both. I just wanted, I wanted to be them. And I've got the privilege of meeting Teddy and like a hell of a guy and just mm. again, just in awe of him. But he said, Teddy used to be like that. He goes, until he realised that if you get your chance in a team that are losing, you're going to look worse. Whereas if you get your chance in a team that are winning and doing well, you're going to look better. Yeah. So why would you want your team to do badly when actually when they're doing well and you're training well, training well, training well, your standards are high, you get your chance because someone might have got a niggle or a manager just wants to change something slightly, you're going to be flying. I said, yeah, I've no, yeah, I've really... And then since yeah. then it was just like... Yeah. The thing is, I think also, if you well. come into a losing team, like you know as well as I know, uh, we've been there. If you're losing, manager changes it. Maybe you don't break the second strike or someone who comes in, for example. Uh-huh. You'll be like, what's he done bringing him in? Mm. Yeah. And then you lose again, and it's like the pressure's then on that guy when yeah. actually he wasn't in the losing run to start with. Yeah. yeah. So he didn't just get dragged into it. So and I, I guess you've think. had your chance then, and then the, the manager might not look, look at you again for, for a month. For there's a couple obviously, of months. there's a. He didn't help me last time, kind of thing. There yeah. are other. There are exceptions. They might yeah. bring a striker in and he bags two or three goals and it's like, what a hell of a, yeah. a decision what that was. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but I guarantee you that's few and far between. You know, you hear of all those stories, but yeah. actually the majority of the time when someone's going, a team are going for a losing streak, they change a few, normally they carry on not doing so well and then they make those players look look poor. Yeah. yeah. And obviously your first goal was against uh, Kidderminster mm. in the cup after missing a golden opportunity in normal time. I'm <coughs> Apparently so. Yep. Apparently so. <laughs> um, Apparently so. That was, oh, okay. that was the only writing notes I got this morning yeah. was I've watched the video yeah. and he had a golden opportunity in 90 <laughs> yeah. which, he, which he missed yeah. but he did get one in, in extra time. Yeah. Was, like, was it not no, uh, straight uh, in extra time like first minute or yeah, something? Yeah, I, I, remember, I remember it well now. Yeah, what, I the miss? Remember. I was trying to, I was obviously trying to Forget about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, forget about it. Well, the problem with DVDs <laughs> is that they're always there. Yeah. And they, and they featured it. DVDs, yeah? Yeah, nice. yeah. 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 I'm sure those, it won't, those old sure things. Sure it won't be a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What were the thoughts on the goal? Um, well... Do you remember it? First, 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 yeah, first, it took a slight deflection, left foot, bottom corner. But, like, I'll it take it. Count. It was first goal, loved it. But I do remember when I was celebrating, um, a few of the players... I can't remember because I just remember just noise. It's like, why didn't you do that in all time? <laughs> so that, that was obviously like, it was, they were pleased, Sorry, sure, but it was also the fact they've got to play another 29 minutes of extra yeah. time. Sarcasm <laughs> straight yeah. away, yeah. So, and then got, you, I got a bit of stick. You don't drink coffee, do you? <laughs> no. Not, do you, yeah, you take it? Sorry. Was yeah, it so if I just sneak it on camera? I, I, so. I, we said it before, I'm trying to get into it, but um, no. So if I sneak it on camera, 
And I don't have yeah. not asked. It's going to be cold anyway. So look, oh, oh, Some oh, people like cold coffee. Yeah, I don't They're like weirdos, coffee. that's what they are. Thank you very much. <laughs> but it's just a look like I've stolen your coffee, and I'll be forever yeah. known as the, the magpie. He's a lovely. He hasn't paid for it anyway. I was going to say, uh, you were mentioning <laughs> on the coach being asked to make coffees for people. As a non coffee drinker, did you make poor coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, I think I might have had a two re- returned. <laughs> I think it's just one of those machines just fucked like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can't, yeah. Yeah. can't go wrong with a little bit of a. <laughs> How many sugars, Jim? I had two. He's definitely. Two, and if he's not, you should put two in. If he's being a bit, you know, you put three yeah, in. Yeah, you know. three in. That's sweet now. <laughs> sweet you have well. youngsters now make poor coffee so they never get asked Youngsters again. don't make them. <laughs> really? Yeah, oh, honestly, you get, you get told to like, yeah. <laughs> Do you get told where to you go? Like, you get, you get, like, Are you that guy in the back of the bus yeah. now? <laughs> I don't even drink coffee. I'm like, who wants a coffee? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that uh, the biggest change? I don't even get up. Is that the biggest change from young players? Like, the respect is, is as it, because obviously we've got things like hazing now. You know, I say that, it's a very important thing. But some of the stuff perhaps you would have done coming through yeah. would be seen as as wrong you know being made to make coffees yeah. against your will or clean boots or whatever how do young players coming through earn their stripes now you know, is it different or is they it... earn their stripes on the pitch I and mean it's, and, it. and it's, diff- it's, it's funny because we do we do it we say it and as long as you've got three or four senior pros on, on the back of the bus saying it they'll get up and do it right. you know what I mean because it is a little bit of respect because you just fly oh cheers for that top man so, but, it's got but then you do the, you return the favour like you might if you do go make it you go like do you want a cup of coffee like that and you make it for them as well so it's <laughs> but back then it weren't it was a case of everyone else on the bus was going get up and make me a coffee and yes you might say like that's a bit mean but like that's what you wanted to do like you wanted to do it in the end Please whereas the younger ones on now, the younger ones nowadays they're like Oh, well, I've got to get up. I'm are they still clean boots? I'm playing my PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> are they, are you, do you still um, check your boots at, at them and say, right, I want to clean by tomorrow morning? Um, I think I think some clubs do, but that even that's died off a bit. I think. Were you not... chuck boots that as a kid? <laughs> as in, like, you know, did Jim say, yeah, yeah Dean, I want to have done what tomorrow oh, morning? I wouldn't have done Jim, Jim's boots. No. Christ. Gold no, plated. Like any speck of mud on them, like you've been running around the pitches or something like <laughs> so that. So is he the worst <laughs> one? <Probably> naked. He was the most demanding in his boots, oh, was he? Massively, yeah. Or from, from what I remember, yeah, oh, like, yeah. If you, a, a sp- a, literally, because uh, back in the day it was all leather boots, wasn't it? so they had to yeah. be like proper scrub leather done. Like if a speck of anything on them, they'd have to get redone, re oh, wow. and this and the other. Yeah. So you re- were chart boots then? I done a few, but I, I, I was <laughs> lucky. I was lucky that I started training with the first team very early on. So my so boots, that bit, bit. yeah. Who was I, know, I know I moaned about it, but actually I skipped a lot of that. So it's like <laughs> boots, go and get the balls in. You know, drinks bottles, clean the changing rooms. I kind of, I'd done a little bit of it, but because I was then part of the first team quite early on, I got away with murder, really. So who was the easiest to do the boots for? Who was the nicest? The easiest. You know? Who would give you your boots and say, you know, who would you think, oh, I want Alan's boots, or I want, you know, whoever's boots? Who was the one you wanted to try and grab hold of? <laughs> Probably someone like Tommy Miller. Yeah. Tommy's on his own. Oh, Tommy was weird, actually. Tommy used to, <laughs> t- Tommy, like, so Tommy's like, what a guy. Really, like the best, the Covering best down. play to play the ball around the corner player I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. If you weren't there, it was your, it was your fault because yeah. you knew it was coming. Yeah, and uh, pass and follow, and so it, 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 you wouldn't need to clean his boots because he was so OCD. Mm-hmm. It was unbelievable, right? So he'd do his laces before a game about eight times because if he didn't get it right, if his foot didn't quite feel, he'd do Mr. his laces. He'd do his laces <laughs> and then he'd get up and he'd be like. <laughs> and he'd take him, he'd take them all off, take his boot off, put his boot back on, and start again. Like, oh my like, days. You know, like you know, like you can't have any bend in the lace, and it'd yeah, be like, right, perfect. Yeah. And he'd tuck it, he'd get up. And I reckon, yeah, I reckon his record was about eight for each boot, and it was just. Uh, was he getting some stick? Well, it'd get, it'd get frustrating because you'd be like, you'd be just walking out, like Tommy, any danger? Like you got your like cope them on the L's on, like just put them on and get out. <laughs> but yeah, so probably probably someone like him because I don't think I don't think he had a boot boy. I think he would have done it himself. Yeah. And just in case, can you just come in a little bit closer? Sorry, I just don't. I'm not looking at the camera shot. Sorry, so. no, you're <laughs> fine. <laughs> just mark the table. Mark the table. Mark the table. Yeah. I was going to say, you obviously said about Jim being your captain. Yeah. When you came in, I'm pretty sure Matt Holland was still there, if I'm not wrong. Uh, right. Uh, like, maybe, that, maybe that Norwich game. That, about that time, he must have still been there. Surely. Was he captain? I think he's still there. He could well have been. I'm not saying. Uh, uh, you were 2002, sure, weren't I'm you? Not so sure it was. Um, if he and was, just he was yeah. If he was, he was leaving. Do you know? I think he might have been there, but leaving. But I'm not certain. It might have been a year before you came. Do you know, really remember, but do you remember a Matt Holland campaign started by the fans to keep him at the football club? No. No? So I started that. I was in the did press, you really? Yeah, in the newspaper, oh, the nice. TV, everything. How did it work out? It didn't, did it? <laughs> I scuffed his Aston Villa move. 
the club cancelled that, but then they sold him on the quiet to, to Charlton. Charlotte. Probably for less money, yeah. what I mean. I said, work, basically, I was, just, I was young, I was a very, as a kid, and I said, if every fan put five pound a week in, we cover his wages for a year. Mm. He's got a history though, because he was you were Majorton out, Jewel out, McCarthy out. <laughs> But I'm Lambert in. Yeah, but his second name's Lambert. He's always going to be Lambert. It's <laughs> the first round he's wanted in. That's not quite true. Anyway, back to the podcast. Thank <laughs> you. Don't reveal that I'm all mostly managers out. What if Jim Lowe is this and he goes, I'm not going on now? <laughs> I even discuss it with him. Yeah. Do that time I help push you out. Yeah, cheers, like, Jim would be great on it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work on it. He so would if you... scare the hell out of you. Yeah, I don't bet he would. But, yeah. but he'd be brilliant. I met him once as a kid. He'd have some stories. But but I've, I've, got some, I've got some sort of tame stories, but he'd have some great stories. The mic's open, my friend. Keep, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the is yours. Uh, Give me yeah. some clickbait. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I met Jim once actually as a kid. We won yeah. the Fair Play Award. And uh, we had the... My team did. Oh right, as Jim he, as he, as he, <laughs> and he wasn't. No, he wasn't playing. And uh, it was before the stages were, were done, really. Um, and I remember meeting him, and he was just huge, a bloke of a man. And I was mm. like ten, and I was scared out of my mind. This is Jim Majorton, yeah. and he's talking to me, and he's like being really lovely and friendly. And I was like, Yes, sir. Yeah, no, and sir. He's got a massive head as well. Yeah, yeah. and, <laughs> and that accent as a kid, he's like, Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's so Watford. My father was a Watford fan, so we often talk about this. Yeah. What are your first of all, what, what are your thoughts on that game? Because that game weather, I mean, were you praying that morning? As in, like, you know, please give me up, you know, the, the highest wind you possibly can. That was a grim day, I think. Yeah, sure it was it great. Because yeah. the first two goals were wind assisted. That first one. Uh, the the first one wasn't one, right? wind assisted. The first one was a, a muck up of the old of the old feet by Mr. Pidgeley. Yeah, his first game left, left on to yeah, right or something. He, wasn't he, it? he shanked it. I I capped myself, turned my back. Next thing you know, ball's actually at my feet, and I thought, ah, oh, that's nice. Open so like, I mean, yeah, I mean, being eager and that, I chased him down, and and everyone said like, if I hadn't chased him down, I would have yeah, scored. Yeah. And actually, I wouldn't have scored because I just showed eagerness by doing it, put him under a bit of pressure, and then next thing you know, I <laughs> tapped the ball in, which is great. The third one was yeah. So probably the top, isn't it? It dies. Yeah. Is that right? The, the um, second one was was a bit yeah, had a bit more to it. But the third one was it just completely died and keeper and defender just like that, just looking at each other. Like, then I just sort of nicked around. And, so what was it like scoring a hat trick at, at Portman Road? Because I was just like, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going to do. Ian Marshall's uh, label scoring a goal at Portman Road better than sex. Right, because <laughs> everyone can have sex. I forgot about that. I'm not sure who he's had sex with. <laughs> That's what he said to him. But he said everyone can have sex, but not everyone can score a goal uh, in, you know, in professional yeah, football, especially yeah. Portman Road. Yeah. So there's a high standard you set there. How would you describe scoring a hat trick at yeah. Portman Road? Uh, Near there? Better than sex. Better than sex. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? It's, it, oh, how can I describe it? Because I think the week before, Benny had scored a hat trick. Um, I think I started, I think it was a whale. Yes, it was, because it wasn't a yeah. scored a hat trick. And um, I started that one, so it was just a case of like, right, we'll start you again, kind of thing. And then, yeah, just t- tapping the ball in, running up to it with my bleach blonde hair that my mum had done. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah, of course. You <laughs> loved yeah, that. Yeah, the tips, yeah. No, you know, when they pulled it through the hat. Wasn't that true? I know what you mean, yeah. Yeah, of course. I wasn't, I was a bit <laughs> upset you're not, you're not, you know, still sporting it, really. You know, bit... What? My, my tips? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I've moved out. I've moved out of the house now. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Oh, she wouldn't have that. Um, yeah, and I, I remember just it was so. Uh, it was the easy. I mean, the second one was was a difficult chance, and I, I yeah. took it well. But it was the easiest hat trick I think anyone will ever score, and I'm not denying that. So when when people have said that to me in the past, like you know, oh, you scored a hat trick at Portman Road. Yeah, but it was the easiest hat trick <laughs> he's ever scored. And it's like. Yeah, I know, but I still scored it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, still, I still scored it. On Sky? Yeah, live on Sky, yeah. I still get it now, funny enough. I still get it, like, if, say, I've not had it at Stone Market yet, but, but like, at Northampton, when I signed there, I've had players come up to me and be like, I remember, actually, when you scored your hat-trick live on Sky, and it was just like, wow. Like, I didn't realise how yeah. many people it reached, yeah. actually it reached out to. It was quite it's, well, quite it's still synonymous in my house. People right? in Hong Kong and Singapore and yeah. as well. I, I was, that, yeah. yeah, I mean, when you think of it like that, at the time, you don't. No. You know, you'd, I picked the ball out of the net, I scored a hat-trick, you know, and I'd scored many hat-tricks as a kid, you know, in the youth team, and I, mm. I probably still saw it as that, but just... Yeah, you didn't realise at the time the magnitude of it. Still not. No, I was seventeen. So yeah. I wasn't. I was still very young. But then, yeah. So then, I think years later, you realise how important it was when you yeah. hear people saying, "Yeah, I remember watching that." And, it's like, oh, and I'm, I, I'm a big squad number person, so I like yeah. my one to elevens. Yeah. 
Yeah. Did you choose number 17 or was that given to you? That was given to me. That By was given Joe. To me. Yeah, yeah, I was quite fussy. No. I'd never had a, a, a the, the, number 10 was always, I would love, I always wanted to be a number 10. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't going to say I want, I can't remember his number 10 at the time, but I wasn't going to say I want his, I want his shirt. <laughs> would it have been Kutch at the time? Uh, no, he was 32. No, he was 32, yeah. 32, of course. Was, 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 Miller or? 10 might be Curry, you know. Uh, Miller. Yeah, it could have been so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ten might be curry, but that's probably the after. So you weren't going to get that. No, no, I won't get that. So I just got given seventeen, and then yeah, that's that's been one of my lucky numbers. And obviously, you played in the playoffs for Ipswich. Yeah. How was that as a young man going in? You know, yeah. Did you? How was how how was the dressing room going into the game? How was you going into the game? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's probably more pressure. Yeah. In a game, in a the two games like that, than I've had in all my career, and I thought. I mean, I've got on the pitch, but you know the, the 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 magnitude of that was just. I can imagine it being like you know, like a Premier League player playing yep. week in week out Premier League, then they play a Champions League game. Same kind of thing. Same kind of thing. Just as obviously, like, well, should have should have gone up surely with that team. Oh, yeah. Did sure. anyone probably, from probably before the playoffs? Uh, that was our, my. I felt like that was the only chance I would have got. Really? Sort of been, yeah, that was head of a head of a squad, head of a team. It just. Did anyone, kind of like it. Was, it like, was there any team meetings in between the two games from from old pros who have been in the playoffs to say like, you know, this is what we're going to do. This is the magnitude. Um, kind of, this is how yeah, you there would have been for yeah. it. Because obviously it's a different time of fixture normally. You know, normally it's like I think yeah, I think and, there wasn't. It wouldn't have been um, with that squad with those players. It wouldn't have been like you know take the pressure off them. It would have been more added oh, pressure. Oh really? So you were a yeah. pressure squad. You, yeah. you thrived off. Yeah, that. but loved it. Yeah, okay. I mean, young, young, being being a younger player just sort of follow the sheet kind of thing so yeah. if, if I'll just if if I knew that they were doing that I'll just carry it I'll work, work to that extent mm. but it was it was a case of yeah this that's this is important this is going to be the biggest game in your life you know so get ready for it and that's how it would have been and how did Joe treat you after the game not just yourself but the squad you know, what uh, was the message it, oh, leaving just, that playoff disappointment devastation yeah, yeah. Dev- devastated but we don't obviously got there again the year after mm-hmm. and, and Again, it didn't quite work out, but it, so it was. It was devastation, but it was kind of just. It was grown men kind of putting arms around each other because they knew that that was the tr- that was a big big chance, mm-hmm. but to kind of just try and because everyone had families, everyone's got kids and that, so you you then try and put it into perspective. At, before you don't. Before this is the most important. Like forget your kids, <laughs> forget, forget your family. You know, they mean nothing. You know, this is the most important. But then afterwards, it's just like you know, lads, you couldn't have given any more. Mm. You know, go and be with your families, go and rest up, and we give it another go next year. And my favourite goal of yours is Gillingham. Okay, and I know we're kind of bouncing, but it's just great to talk to you about your about your career, really. Mm. But my favourite goal of yours is Gillingham. Uh, I think it was an absolutely wonderful goal. Do you do you remember scoring that goal? Do you remember your do, the, the type of goal it was. Do you yeah. still replay it in your in your mind now? Do you still think that was a good finish? Because it was a delightful uh, finish. It was a hell of a finish, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, do you remember what Joe Rawls said to you after, or said about no. you after the game? He said that you were the best finisher at the football club. Right. Do you, did, did you remember hearing that? No. No. No, I don't. I don't remember hearing that. I just hearing it now. How does it make you feel? Yeah. Knowing that he felt he felt. I think that. the the thing is the difference between being. I think what he meant by that was. I never used to lever a ball. I never used to just put my laces through it. You know, Shefki would just put his laces through it. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like Benny had all sorts of finishes in his yeah. locker. He was yeah. different. He was exceptional. I had. I just used to try and just caress like, it. Kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. A lot of my goals. I leave, if it was, if it's not a tap in, I'll try and curl it in the top corner or like because I just wanted, I wanted it. that nice like watching it back kind of yeah. that was nice you're a camera player yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're a Sky Sports so, replay yeah. so when so when I yeah when I, when I when I scored that it just was all of that kind of that work that I put in on that the training that moment, it was yeah. just that little kind of bounce little in front of the top. north stand yeah it was nice yeah, yeah I, it just when he said I suppose I'd never I don't I didn't hear that so it's lovely to hear that but I think that's what he meant it was yeah. just the I always tried to score like the perfect goal rather yeah. than just put your With the laces technique. through it yeah what was uh, I was going to say just to interrupt what was uh, yeah, what was Shefki like uh, from an outside perspective I, I don't know it just it was nuts. pretty nuts yeah to be honest that's nuts. the only way I could describe it yeah gentle giant yeah absolute gentle giant I mean I still don't know how he'd do, he'd do that celebration yeah, did, I mean, did, did you try it without, without breaking did I try it yeah. <laughs> when yeah, I, I? As a, yeah. Did well, I break a rib? No, no. <laughs> Could anyone else yeah. do it? Did anyone else try it? Yeah, it must P- have been P- some injuries. P- yeah, everyone P- was scored. trying it in the playground. Uh, I think you set him up. 
Right. And then he He's goes, does the yesterday. dive. And I've done it behind And him. you basically <laughs> just <laughs> dive with him. <laughs> Mine probably end up being like more of a clingsman rather than actual. Because he would literally, uh, there's pictures of him at about seven foot. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Everyone was doing it in a playground or yeah. not a playground, that'd be pretty uncomfortable, but on the field, right. definitely. Well, we used to, I used to ask, well, I asked him once, <laughs> I'd be like, how'd you do that, mate? Because, like, like, I mean, he was a big boy. Like, yeah, yeah. A lot well, of, Joe lot said of, not to do it, didn't he? Probably, yeah. <laughs> but what he, what he used to do was he said, well, what I'd do because he had a good leap on him anyway, but just before he landed, because I, I used to think he'd just jump and just, just yeah, hit the floor, it. hit the deck. No, but he used to like put his arms out and then sort of push himself like that. Right. So he'd, he'd push his forward bobber. with his arms. Yeah, but he's a big boy. So he'd land and then push himself and then throw himself <laughs> Whereas we used to think he'd just go, so so you kind of started hearing that and you go, okay, fair enough. Which DVD is it? Because then Dean can watch it back and see. So <laughs> yeah, it's Judge's I want to watch performance. it back because I, I can't, it, I'll bet it's horrendous. It's one of the 0405 it be the... 0405, yeah. there it is. Okay. Check it out. Go and, get, go and rent it from your nearest blockbusters. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've got a question here from, uh, from uh, Ben Moore. Uh, you mentioned Benty obviously being lethal. Uh, who is the best player you've played with at, at town? Uh, and would you have gone to coaching? Okay, Benny. So two questions. Benny, so Benny's the best player ever played with. Was, and he was only, I think, a year above me. Two yeah, years he was. Yeah. Something like that. And seeing, like, as like Darren Ambrose was, like, technically was very good, like, would score ridiculous goals. But Benny just, like, I think because of the era that we played in, if he played in, like, now, defenders are getting quicker. But he would just look... Always like, on the shoulder. ...lightning. Yeah. But then would finish with... A bit of finesse, yeah. you know, would score headers, would like, would just do things that you just say, oh, because I couldn't do it. I think that's that was the thing. I would look at other players and I think, like, I'd look at Tommy, loved, loved playing with Tommy, absolutely loved it because he just, he's just a pure footballer. I loved playing with Jim, just never give the ball away. Mm. But I feel like I could try and do what they'd done. But like, Bentley was so fast, was, would score unbelievable goals yeah. that I don't think anyone else could score. Yeah, well I think that Norwich goal sums him up, doesn't it? Off the last shoulder, lightning through, and then he's No one ever got near him either. Then the like, composure, yeah, though, I think, was it to round. Their, their lad tried to bring him down, didn't he? But was, tried to do him, he was too, too strong, strong, too, too quick. Fast, yeah. Then he just little slot under, like, yeah. he sort of took composure his time. In front like, of the no, no rushing. In front of the bike as well, that's, uh, uh, some stuff just, alleged that. I mean, I played, I played with some big names, Actually, Alan Smith, he played with, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and, like and the, the thing is, again, he was getting older, they'd had a bad injury, like his time at Leeds would have been his prime, he would have been yeah. exceptional, Man United, stuff like that. Remember that but, so, yeah, and like, played with <coughs> even like Jimmy Bullard, like, I mean, I funny, funny you. boy, like, incredible, like, loved him, <laughs> technically very good, but again, towards the end of his career, like, it's, it's, it's hard to sort of say, Deli Alley. That I played with Deli Ali, like incredible, credible player, but know. like at town, it had to be Benny. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I, I would put yourself in the the, the Miller Majora sort of category, more of a football player. Yeah, boy at your feet, can do the, the, the like technique. Yeah, yeah, and likes to be involved. You know, yeah, so where we'd like to play little one twos with people. Whereas Benny would, wouldn't do that; he'd run past everyone. Yeah. Miller, Miller, Miller would play one two, just go run past them. Yeah. Miller would always be arriving on that. Edge of the box penalty spot at yeah. the right moment, ah, didn't he? Yeah. Absolute knack of it. Did he ever miss a pen? Yeah, I was just was was thinking that. Did he miss one? Because I remember he, he never missed a pen. One. Not for him, such a It was pretty much every time you saw him step up, Mr. it was pretty much guaranteed a goal. He was already walking back. Yeah. <laughs> it was just so was he, good. Did he practice a lot? Was it just off the cuff? He knew. No, what? he practiced, yeah. He, he that, practiced, but he was just so good at it. Is that because he, he was a cool person? Like, very calm, very collected? Or was Because it's down to mentality, really, isn't it? I mean, I've got a brother, he's automatic from the penalty spot. Right. Whereas I couldn't hit the barn door, you right. know, from it. I, the nerves get to me. The pressure, okay. the, 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 even at Sunday level, the magnitude of we should be scoring this penalty yeah. gets to me. Yeah, uh, I had done since a kid. So was Tommy more of a quiet, calm person? It was. I wouldn't know, have said he was quiet and calm, but no? I know what you mean. He, it was, was cold just, and calculated. Yeah, yeah. Like he's technically one of the better players I've, I've played with, you yeah. know, and because I, I'd pitch like I yeah, played with. Martin Royster, I played with yeah, yeah. Darren Curry, you know, people who technically like mm. would put a ball on an absolute plate for people. Yeah, whip on the walls. But like Tommy, I'd have Tommy on the penalty spot every day of the week because for some reason, like he'd have people because back then you'd be like the players would be like getting in his ear before he's taking it and he'd just be like <laughs> just, you know, just to say, So I'm gonna go, I'm just about to score a pen, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> leave, leave me alone. <laughs> and he'd just get up a step up and there was no like seeing these people like Pogba like 
like walking up to it or or stop and stop and do, do all that. He just did it. And he just literally that way. ran up, bash, bottom corner, bottom corner, never yeah. really sort of opted for any other like up high, down the middle, like just inside like, side. That yeah, northern type of just get on with it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just get on with it, I'm gonna get to score back I go like yeah. and I think obviously the more he just didn't miss. Yeah. That that was your confidence. You know. A bit like Darren Coe from the free kick situation, I yeah. suppose. You know, when Darren stepped up from the free kick, you it was almost automatic, wasn't it? You knew, as a fan especially, you sat there with anticipation. It's going to be at least a good ball in the box. Not right? nerves. Yeah. You know, sometimes, especially these days, we've gone through a period without having a set piece taker. Yeah. You sit there and you go, who's taking this one? Yeah, yeah. Whereas then, you sat there and you went, this is going to either go top bins yeah. or near top bins. There was, you know? there, was, there was always a penalty taker, a free kick taker. A corner take, like, and that was your job. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? But all the players, like, knew they knew that was your job. So no, no one wanted the penalties off Miller. Then. No, you got to get them. <laughs> before before uh, Miller had them, uh, Kunago was taking them. Pat but was I, I noticed that he was uh, always putting them like bottom right from right. where he was shooting yeah. from at his angle. And I was thinking, why would the goalie ever dive the other way? He's taken every single one, and every single one's gone in the same yeah. spot. Well, that's just that would have been research, you know. Now, now you get you get all the videos of every penalty, didn't you? And they literally goalkeepers get their own little yeah. like right. If it, if you if there's a pen, he's taking it. He's been going that way. He's been go. He'll probably go this way. And it's just up to the keeper to remember. When you're saying more of a, like a finesse shot person, yeah. did Kanago help you with that sort of thing, or because that yeah. was his sort of? I pretty much watching every goal he did. It was just a little one in the corner. Yeah. He, there was no yeah. smashing them or anything. No, tears. I don't think he ever. I think he. I don't think he ever shot with his laces ever. No, he just <laughs> passed them in every. He just literally would get the ball. He'd get the ball in the box, stick his ass in. No one would get around him. He'd do that, do that, spin, just pass it in the bottom corner. Like that was him. Bring or up back the, and he was brilliant as well. Or back here, yeah. It, did he pull his hamstring once? Didn't he? I, think he did, I say he yes. pulled his hamstring. He got he got absolutely ridiculed by by Joe Rule for that. Did he really? Yeah, because he kept back it in, kept trying to back. But he was good at it oh, because brilliant. what he'd do, he'd drag two or three players towards him because he'd just be so strong. But a magnet, wouldn't he? Yeah, and then literally just see Tommy probably running off him and just go mm-hmm. like that back heel. And then he pulled his ammy once. And Joe, and got, yeah, on Joe got on him about it. So you've got to stop back here with the ball, mate. <laughs> <laughs> As fans, we often, you often hear shouts from the, why are they working on set pieces when you have a really bad set piece? How often as a professional yeah. do you do set piece yeah. or, would you, or would you do set piece training? You know, uh, it, it depends on the manager. Right. Yeah, it depends on some managers like uh, Carl Robinson would do on a Friday... Um, we'd do a warm up we'd go through some set pieces the general kind of set pieces will always be there might tweak a few little things but then everyone got to know their jobs defending, attacking, done Right, right. didn't really concentrate too much I'd imagine a Tony Pulis being like Monday to Friday we yeah. would do some sort of set pieces yeah. but then it worked mm-hmm. you know so it's it's how much do you want as a manager how much do you want to, because set pieces are so important I'll How much do you want to concentrate on that, or do you want to concentrate on your in-play, free-flowing football, okay. as a Carl Robinson would have done? Yeah, because it's also something you always hear from fans. You know, which you have two or three of them in a game yeah. that's bad. You always go, "Oh, they're not working on those, then, are they?" What they're doing, what they're doing a week. Yeah, it's like so it. annoying <laughs> because there will be uh, there will be some. I imagine, I imagine Paul Lambert would probably work on him. I'd imagine he would work on him, yeah. but like it only takes the corner taker just to not quite get it right. Yeah. Because like you do stuff like. So Darren Curry, if you told him, can you put it on the edge of the six-yard box, back stick, mm-hmm. he'd do it. You know, whereas if, if everyone's running to that back stick, getting blocks on, and someone hits the front man, suddenly it's like, oh, they don't work on set pieces. It's like, well, you do. It's just the <laughs> corner taker has not quite job. done his job. Yeah. You know, and the pressure on the corner taker then is like, you know, we've worked all week on, on me putting <laughs> it on there, and I'll put it there. And it's like everyone's looking at him and just saying, why have you done that? Yes. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to. <laughs> We've had quite a few of yeah. those in recent years, yeah, haven't we? Yeah. Um, not saying any names. Start with boots. Um, yeah. So you've had quite a few loans in your career. Yeah. As a player, how does that affect you, constantly going out on loan? Um, does it affect you? Or is it just a simple case I, of... I just wanted to play. You know, yeah. I've, 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 I've always said to younger players, if they're not playing, like just go and knock on the manager's door and say, look, am I in your plans? If not, I want to go and play football. You know, and that was always the case. And because I burst onto the scene, but then I didn't. I think the problem with me was because of physically, I was always, I was still am quite slight mm. in a man's game. And I feel like back then it was more of a real brutal man's game. Malcolm McKay type of game. Yeah, I needed to be like stronger. 
um, especially like Joe Rawls manager Joe Rawls was the king of like just getting the ball into his chest and you ain't getting the ball off him you know but I didn't do I couldn't do that so physically I was always sort of behind the game mm. so if I weren't in the team or if I weren't playing if I was out of the squad I wouldn't go in like moaning like I should be playing I'd be like well I want to go and play football then and so they as a development point of view it's like well you can go and actually it it grew me up a lot quicker because I would go off on loan and I would play football and I would I would learn I would learn how to play play men's football, you mm. know. Where's the best loan place you've you, you played at? Best loan place. Or best place you you know, Alden Ewitz which were MK, they 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 were two more settled clubs, aren't yeah. they? So Yeovil, outside, yeah, Yeovil would have been like so, obviously a settled club as well, but yeah. Um uh, you had Burnley at Brighton you had um, uh, probably Brighton because it's such a nice place yeah <laughs> it's a lovely place yeah they were a club yeah. on the up or growing yeah. at the time weren't they yeah probably um, yeah I mean I, I went to Northampton on loan mm. as well and uh, I went to Brentford on loan any regrets for your career any, anything you look back at your career and think I wish I'd said that differently or I wish I'd done that differently or no no I wouldn't say there's any regrets because at the time so I signed for Northampton for two reasons really one because I felt like I was going to get a good chance under Justin and Edinburgh like you know. um, and things haven't didn't quite work out for me there but that happens to many a football yeah. so I can't turn around and say oh I wish I hadn't signed for them because yeah. at the time they weren't far sort of for me to travel no. uh, me and me and the wife have been going through IVF and it weren't far from Oxford so that was another big thing Okay, um, and I just felt like it was the right decision at the right time. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. I could have turned around and said, oh, I wish I'd maybe signed for a different club, but that's football at yeah. the end of the day. So I'd never have any regrets. I could have signed for Man United at 15. Yeah. What a different career that might have turned out to be. It might have been worse. You so, know, you so, don't like, so, yeah. so you can't, I don't have regrets. I know some players be like, I'll regret doing that with, but that's just hindsight. What would you say to a young player coming through now? If they had the chance to sign for a, a Yeovil or a Man United, for example, what would mm. you say to a young player, oh. where what sort of career path would you want, Mister? Di- m- m- you know, yeah. m- 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 as a, as a what? How old? Fifteen. Yeah. yeah. So fifteen, you've got the op- options again. It's a mini Dean Bowden. Yeah. You, you, your in son. this day and age as well. Yeah, because obviously these days you look at the yeah. CV yeah. and players. You you could say players with Chelsea on their CV mm. would find a club perhaps easier than someone with Ipswich on their CV. Yeah. So yeah, would you say just get lost in the system but have that on the CV, yeah. or would what would you? So I. Uh, so difficult. That's why because, I asked. Yeah, it's <laughs> so difficult because I, because I always wanted to play for Ipswich. That was my uh, coming through the ranks. I just wanted to be a first team player at Ipswich. So when I got that chance, it was kind of like I sat down with my mum and dad. It was just like Man United, you know, it's a big club. But Fergie. I want to play for I want to play for Ipswich, you know. And they they were kind of pushing me towards that because like you're going to get more of a chance at Ipswich, mm. you know. And even even back then it was kind of like, like we don't want you to get lost in the system back then yeah like what's it like now there's well, even more of a system we look at Chelsea system. yeah like 30 players out on loan or something so, so 100 people in a WhatsApp group yeah. on loan <laughs> yes you've got yes you've got probably more money in it yes you've got better CV in it but are you going to have a longer career <laughs> maybe not you know a small percentage of those players will they go on to play you know till they're 33, yeah. 34, 35 or will maybe, they be lost in or will they just get lost in and just die but because they've earned a few quid been at Chelsea for a bit yeah. they then go off and do like a clothing line or something like that yeah. I don't know it's, it's very difficult I would still opt to say to people just you want to be playing football wherever you are wherever you are at first team level yeah. so if you've got more of a chance of doing that but you might be playing for a lesser club I would still look to do that in my eyes and obviously last time we, we, we kind of spoke well I'm not going into details I don't know if you want to re- reveal much about it but you were looking to get in maybe coaching with, mm. M- with MK yeah but, um, is coaching something you're looking to go into yeah potentially yeah I'm still I'm doing my badges and stuff like that and I've done a little bit of coaching in the academy at MK Dons and um, thoroughly enjoyed it you know I, I love I feel as I've got older the younger players within the squad, I've tried to say like, you know, tried to give them a little bit of advice, take it or leave it kind of thing. Because sometimes you say it to them and they're just like, sharp mate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, but the the younger younger ones, I've done some like under 15, 16 stuff, and um, some of them don't know who you are. Some mm-hmm. of them do. You know, 
and you kind of go in and I think it's just the information you give them when you actually say you know look mate I played 450 games at professional level scored nearly 100 goals you know I've, I've done alright in the game you've not done too so bad so <laughs> if I say like look if you've got a chance there of turning slotting someone in or you've got a chance then just to sort of get on the half turn or play one touch or take take care of that touch or look like just try it you yeah. know I remember the, remember one one kid and this is what this is the kind of the, the, the feeling I get from coaching and I'm sure the best coaches get the same feeling but I wasn't actually part of this session and I was just kind of like a support for a particular session <clears throat> and I was standing over the other side of the pitch and this kid just wasn't getting the ball just wasn't getting it and he was getting so frustrated so I called him over and I said look rather than like just standing out here go and make a little run in there see if you get the ball next time the, literally midfielder got ball he made a run in behind got the ball scored a goal and he looked over to me and I just literally gave him a thumbs up and he was biggest smile on his face and he's only like 14, 15 but like to me, that was like he's listened, he's done it, he's implemented it, and he's gone got and he's gone and got his rewards. And now he's thinking, oh mate, I might listen to him next time. Yeah. And that's the kind of rewards that you get as a coach. So would it be the younger generation you look to go into coaching, or would it be more senior? I think you need to start because some players are just made for like first team football yeah, straight sure. away. They just they just slot in. Yeah. They they're very good at it. The way that they deliver to sessions is more made for the first team environment whereas I would like to kind of do the younger sort of age group maybe not too young I just ain't got the patience for like the, the 8, 9, 10 year old my wife's school teacher now she does the, the, the ones that can listen and then change what they do I think I would be quite good in that environment but going into sort of first team environment I would like to maybe do that first because I've got a bit of advice um, from another coach of mine who said um if you're going to go into coaching, do the younger age group. Dean Austin, Dean Austin it was. He was, the, he was the manager at Northampton for a bit. He was sort of unfortunately sacked. So I didn't, didn't think it was the right decision, but there we go. And um, he said to me, if you're going to go into coaching, <clears throat> coach a younger age group first because it will teach you patience. And that was it. In my head, I think, okay, that's a good idea because you get to first team and you expect them yeah. to just do it straight away, yeah. but they still don't. And then you get frustrated because you're thinking, but if you've already learned a bit of patience, then you're more patient with them as well. Yeah, I had that. I mean, uh, not nowhere near the level yourself, obviously, but I managed a men's team mm. and I did the exact same thing. You'd say something and you'd want to shake them. Yeah. Because yeah, again, us two were in the team, so. <laughs> yeah, most of the players. It was things you want to shake most yeah. of the time. Yeah. <laughs> and you know they could do it, yeah. such as the run right inside, and yeah. they just wouldn't. No. And you'd just be like, yeah. So I think but I think if you do it, if you do it from that age, you can't shake them. No, <laughs> no, you can't. No, 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 you can't shake them. You can't have a go at them no. because you got you got to react and you got to tell them. And we've had that, haven't we, recently yeah. with, with coaches uh, being suspended, etc. For yeah. for accusations such like that. Yeah. So as far as getting involved, yeah. you've got to be restrained. You've got yeah. to talk. And you've got to learn patience so that then when you then go on to the older age group, you can maybe be a little bit less patient, but you've already learned the kind of the core of it. And obviously, you're wearing a uh, Stone Market Town Football Club uh, tracksuit. That's not just for show. You have obviously joined Stone Market. Yeah. How did that come about? Uh, again, a strange one, really, because when I got released from Northampton, uh, I was expecting uh, our first child. And I've just obviously said about IVF, so it's been a long time coming. Congratulations. Very excited. Um, there are more things to life than football. So I decided. <laughs> Oh, probably not the right time to say that. <laughs> not a football podcast. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, but what I mean by that is not everyone is very lucky uh, when they say, right, we're going to start a family, and they start a family. Yeah. You know, some people have to go through a lot of turmoil and a lot of ups and downs, and, and me and Hayley have been through that. So to get the opportunity to finally have a child, mm. um, nothing, was, nothing was going to get in my way of that. So when I got released from Northampton... I sat down with Keith Curl and had a, had a real good conversation. I knew what was coming and it was, um, you know, I'd been through a tough time there under him and stuff. But do you know what? I wish him all the very best. He wished me all the best. If we need anything, like, just give us a call. There was none, there was none of this, like, you know, like, you're whatever. What were his um, reasons for letting you go? Because I, I thought you he just wanted, he just wanted to He just wanted to refresh everything. He wanted younger players. He wanted a... a, a in his eyes, a, a, a better squad, you know, and, he's, and he was honest with me to say, I just don't think you're going to fit that, that, that role. I don't feel like you um, 
will fit the way I want to play, you know, and this, that, and the other. And I was just, look, again, it's a man, I, like I said to you at the start, if a manager has that decision, I'm not going to turn around and be like, well, you're wrong. It's like, well, that's your decision. Like, and that's fine. I'll shake your hand and I'll move on. And the fact that I was expecting as well, it was almost like I was not happy because that's, that's the wrong thing to say. You should never be happy from being released from a football club. But I was almost like, now I actually get a chance to spend some time at home with my newborn. Whereas if he'd offered me another year, then I might not have had that time. No. Which is, I know it seems crazy to think that, but like in my world, I was like, I get to spend, and I was always going to put aside three months to spend at home with my son. You know, and that, and that's what I got, and I, I would never change it. Well, I imagine, though, being a professional football player, you've had to be on competition from a, as a child, be on competition for a squad place, for a first team place. So, when you're given a contract, yeah. you want to put your everything oh, in it yeah, because you've yeah. now the Alan Armstrong, if you like, looking behind, yeah. thinking who's coming through, and still wanting to give your best. So, yeah, yeah I, I, I think we can all agree and, and kind of see your point of view yeah. in terms of you weren't happy, but you were relieved. Yeah, I think is the word. It's, it's sad to say, yeah, because you because. There's so many kids out there that want to be professional footballers and I don't want to give the wrong impression of like how I felt, but the, the, the turmoil that we had to go through to get him, yeah, a child, he turned out to be a boy. And uh, he, Next he was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, hopefully. And um, he was everything like yeah. for us as a, as a, to start a family. So to get that chance to then and I've been very privileged that I've been able to put a bit of money aside to sort of cope with the transition and I sort of said yeah I'm gonna stay at home and it didn't stop me from wanting to still play so like I went and trained with Boreham Wood for a bit I went and trained over at Barnet for a bit when I've done a few sessions um, down at Sutton United um, I'd done I then had a phone call I had a, uh, no I had a message from Jack Ainsley who played at Stowe Market yeah. And um, I played with him at Ipswich. He was a younger player, and uh, he said, "Would you come to Stone Market?" And I was that. And this was my son was three weeks old, mm-hmm. and I had no chance. <laughs> I want to spend a good you know, two, months, two or three <clears throat> months at home. Um, and if I'm going to sign anywhere, I'm not going to be driving an hour and a half, two hours, however long it might be, because I'm not going to have that time then at home to to bath him, to put him to bed, to yeah. have those that, important those precious right. moments. So. Um, I said, thank you, but no thank you. Had other offers. I could have gone down to Yeovil again um, under Darren Sull, who signed me on loan at Stevenage, um, on loan from Northampton, blah, blah, blah. And he really wanted me to go down there. Again, same reason. I said, I can't spend that time away from him. So I just and declined location, that. location, wasn't there anything you ever considered? No. No, that I was always going to stay put. Mm-hmm. You know, friends, family were close by, Milton Keynes. So I was, I was never going to move from there. And then... I started to look at other things in my in away from football, um, doing media stuff. You know, done a bit of commentary over with, with Brenner and Suffolk, uh, Radio Suffolk. I've done some stuff at MK Dons with Luke Ashmead. Um, I started to really enjoy that because I was sort of thinking, oh, this could be something I would quite like to do. And then I met, I got introduced to a guy who sort of has got his own property finding business, and I've always been interested with property and. Um, started to do a little bit of stuff for him and it was sort of thinking okay well maybe I'll go into that like always in the background going to the gym doing a bit keep myself ticking over but starting to almost come away from football completely yeah and then through the property which is really strange I I ended up at um, the training ground and uh, what's it called now oh what Playford Road yeah Jesus Christ I always see I have these blanks Anyway, so I was at Playford Road to deliver a presentation with with um, with Lee, the guy's name, yep. does the property to the under twenty threes. And when he said he was going to Ipswich, I was like, oh, I've got to come with you because mm. I might see some people. And we saw the photos on Instagram. Yeah, and I saw it's got people uh, intrigued. Yeah, and I saw yeah. Well, <laughs> people, people were saying I'm going to be signing back at. <laughs> the amount of response I've yeah, had saying, yeah. "Are you fit enough to sign for town?" Probably not. You know, no, uh, yeah. probably not. <laughs> so it was quite a surprise to yeah. see you sign for State Market. Because yeah, you've still got a lot to give. Yeah, um, I, and that's the thing. So I went there, and I bumped into Brian Clark, bumped into Scotty Mitchell, bumped into Adam Atai, James Hogg. Tommy Smith yep. was there doing a bit of training yep. bumped into him and I'm seeing all these people that like I, I, and I'm just loving like the kind of getting get, sorry, yeah like just having that kind of chat about old times 
gets a little bit of the fire going again. And then Scotty just went, what about Stone Market? I was like, oh, funny enough, Jack had mentioned me about them. Yeah. And he's like, well, let me have a word with the manager and see if they're still interested in sort of doing something. What's he doing? He's sort of the head of recruitment in the academy. Oh, okay. So he's... Um, He's just yeah, doing nothing. And uh, <laughs> Scotty. <laughs> oh, I love him. And um, so so he said, What about them? I said, Yeah, look, I said, look, let me have a chat with the manager because I still feel like I can still play at a decent level. For sure. But my biggest thing was being happy. Mm. Because the last sort of three years of my career, Carl Robinson got sacked. Um, I knew I was gonna be kind of shifted on because Robbie Nielsen came in and I knew he was going to be sort of getting rid of a lot of players and a lot of the core players as well. So I thought, I'm going to be one of them. Right? So I'm going to be off and I didn't really enjoy that because I love the club and stuff like that. Went to Northampton thinking, there we go, like it's going to sort of resurrect it again. I'm going to... And then that didn't work out. So for three years, two and a half years really, I wasn't really enjoying football. So I just wanted to go somewhere. I was going to sort of just irrelevant of what level, where it was going to be as long as it wasn't too far travelling. Yeah. But like, I wanted to en- just enjoy it, it put a smile on my face. And I went and sat down with, with Rick. He's a great bloke. A great bloke, great guy. And from what I heard, sort of from Scotty Mitchell, uh, from Jack, from Rick, about the ambition of the club. They're Huge, flying in the league. You know, it, it kind of made me think, you know, as, as non-league clubs go, it's as professional as it's going to be. Yeah. You know what they were trying to do, and they wanted my advice as well from what they think they we could do uh, with making it even more professional. Oh, wow. You know, and stuff like that. And so suddenly, I'm actually I'm not potentially coming here as a player. I'm coming out here to try and raise the profile of a football club, to try and take the club forward. Uh, how exciting is that? Absolutely. You and know? they've got some really big plans, haven't they? Massive plans. I remember going like probably with James before, probably I don't know what. 2015, 16, there's like 90, 120, 30, 130 people there. I don't know what it's like now. If, if that, huge. they've got like three, four, 400 people going to the games and yes, and it's and for for a club like that on on the up, I just I just got excited and I was just like, yeah, what what can we do? Got you know, and I, and I still want to. Uh, look, it's part time. Uh, there's a potential role at. MK Dons that I'm looking to take as like an amb- ambassadorial role oh, brilliant. which is on my doorstep and it's like stuff that in the community that I'd love to be able to do like and I feel like I'd be pretty good at it mm-hmm. so that's still going to be going on but I still get the chance to play football still but not just play football but play it with a huge grin on my face which is what I want and what are your first thoughts of Stone Market now you've been there two weeks three weeks, yeah, a couple uh, of weeks. not town a couple of training sessions um, <laughs> yeah what are your first thoughts on? Uh, the, the players there are already like a step or two above, yeah. in my opinion. And you can see that from the yeah. way they're winning games. It's well, just, you know, they have obviously uh, got a, a bigger budget than most in that yeah. division. Uh, and there's Still got a recent thing in that budget. Brought a few players down from Leicester and fixed them yeah. in places. So you, you obviously you think they're a step above. But what are your own personal goals for the season? You know, like well, what do you want to do? What do you want to achieve? I, want, I just want to just want to win as well like you know, I want to score goals I want to have that camaraderie of like when you've won a game like because I, I just felt like the last two years especially we got you know we got relegated from League One Northampton and then the change room in the, the second year was just it wasn't good it wasn't a good change room as in like there was a lot of kind of chat a lot of backstabbing a lot of unrest and, and it just wasn't me and I just thought I need to I can't do this I can't come into work and not want to be there, you know. Um, and I've turned up a stone market, and it's like, and I'm training at eight o'clock in the evening. But actually, I'm turning up, and I'm with a little spring in my step, and I'm kind of like high fiving people. Like, come on, let's go! Like, let's go and train, you know. Let's go and do it. And it's just made me feel sort of young again. But like, I know that they've got successful things ahead, and that's what I just want to be part of that. And you're loving your football again. Yeah. Which is what's most important. Well, it's the most and. People say when you have a, when you have a child, it, it changes changes your life, and I was like, yeah, all right, and it does, doesn't it? Does. It? it changes yeah. your life from kind of a physical point of view because I'm constantly tired, but also, <laughs> <laughs> but also it changes your kind of outlook. outlook. It does. And all I want to do, I just want to, I want to, obviously, I want to provide for him, provide for my wife, and that, and but also I want to want to be happy. Yeah. And and why not go to a club relevant to where they are, mm-hmm. but they're on that path, yeah. you know. And 
I just want to be part of it. Do you think it helps also that it's not obviously you had a half and you train it's twice a week? Twice, twice a week. week. So it's yeah. not all day, every day. Yeah, and that's commitment of Yeah, and I think, I, mean? I think um, I'm glad you brought it up because physically I've suffered with a few injuries in, in, in the past and some mostly kind of muscle injuries and stuff like that. And you either get very lucky as a professional footballer. I always look at my mate at MK, Dean Lewinson. He's he's built like an ox. Oh, Dean Lewinson. He's yeah. played over seven hundred games. Yeah, he's like, a long time, mate. and he's only he's he's just been there, and he plays ninety minutes every week, trains every day. Like he just, and I know he's like people will look like so they joke saying, yeah, but he never sprints anywhere. <laughs> but, but like he does, he doesn't need to because he's such a Breezy clever, game. clever footballer. Sorry, such a clever, clever footballer. So it's. <sighs> I've been, I don't feel like I've been lucky because I've been able to play a lot of games score a lot of goals still but the injury side of things of a full time footballer just relentless every day doing your exercises training the cool downs do, but doing it to a high level that my body's so highly strung that at any point my hammy could like maybe do my calf could maybe do this but I've, in my head I'm thinking I've got to make sure I do this because otherwise I might do that I might pull something mm-hmm. so go into suddenly two like, two training sessions a week where I'll still do the recovery stuff but it's just not as not as intense on my body yeah. I, ho- I should hope to think that my, I'll be able to cope a lot more yeah. with, with, prolong, the, with the load yeah. prolong your career career like, like by yeah. sort of two or three years well, I think not. having met yourself and met some of the guys that play there and Rick especially I think you were the character they're looking for for mm. a promotion season you know you're going to come in and not not be like in Northampton where you, you've got all those egos in the dressing room I think yeah. you're all on level uh Playing field in terms of character and you know and, and desire to win, which yeah. you know sometimes when you try and collect a team of all stars, you can sometimes get some egos. Get one or two, yeah, yeah. And that can upset the apple cart. But I think the stone market there. I've already noticed in the group chat. The group chat is just popping every day. But like they're 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 all it's all banter and it's all yeah. that kind of stuff, which I love. But then someone would put in like like don't forget to put your feet up tonight, boys. Like big game tomorrow. Yeah. And it's like. Serious. There were a response from people. It's just, it's not like, oh, shut up, stop being a, like, a, you know, <laughs> Nanny, stop spoiling. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, come on, lads, like, big one tomorrow, this, that, blah. And it's all, it's just all about the team winning. Bit of focus. Well, yeah. yeah. And that's personal, great to see. Let's get some personal goals from you, though. I want to try and nail you down with it. How many goals <laughs> are you going to score for at Stone Market Town? I don't know. 10? <laughs> we say 10? Is 10 a good number? Double figures would be nice. Yeah. Because yeah. obviously, your first chance failed you last weekend, didn't it? Didn't go well, did it? I think it's still rising. I think it is. <laughs> yeah, I think it ballooned that a little bit, didn't you? The, uh, the state yeah. market's social feed didn't, didn't you know, yeah. pulls a Dean Bonish and he skies it. Yeah. Well, that's the one. Do you know what I was saying about like, <laughs> trying to caress everything? I put my laces through it and look what happens. Yeah, it's a chef key. You need to get back to like just like, curling it in the bottom Absolutely. corner. So. Yeah, I've got a couple of questions. Two questions from state market fans. Having trained and watched State Bake Blake, if, yeah. he, if he applied himself, how far do you think he could, he could have gone? And that's from Ash. If he had applied himself. Yeah, okay. I've, I've never really right. met the chaps. So I don't know if he's got, uh, you know, if he is applying himself. Yeah, yeah. But Ash says if he applied himself through his career, how far <laughs> could he have gone? <laughs> what, what, so, what are your first thoughts, basically? Yeah, it's the, of, of of State Bank. Yeah. Uh, Good finish up. Yeah, he's. I'm, I'm surprised because I don't know. Look, I don't know all of these players too well. Mm-hmm. But from what I've seen of him, to to say that he hasn't applied himself is quite surprising that's not my words exactly <laughs> and I don't know that these guys know these, these boys more than me Likewise. But, but from what I've seen he's I mean funny enough I came on the other day my mum and dad came like they try and my, my dad's buzzing because he's like oh, I get to watch football again yeah. so, <laughs> so anyway so he's he comes to the game and the first person he said he goes oh I really like that number I think it was number 10 mm-hmm. in the game the other day he was like I oh, really like number 10 I was like yeah because he, he applies himself well like he he Runs in behind. He's quite quick. Like he's he's direct. He wants to sort of get shots away. He, he wants to sort of get his body in. And so I can see when I say about players that are sort of levels above. You know, not just him. Like most of the players there. Yeah. Like you see that are levels above. So yes, he could have probably done, gone up the levels, especially. But I can't see a, a problem with his, his application at the moment. No, well, you know, yeah. not my, my words. And uh, second question. Have you seen Doug French dance yet? Yes. Will you be joining him? Oh, I want to kind of get the video up. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, I think yeah. we've seen it on social media. I think oh, he's, a, yeah, right. he's a star, of course. Mr. Of course, French. Yeah, yeah, so 
that, funny enough, when I, I went for that meeting with Rick, that was one of his selling points. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it was. Yeah. I've seen the videos. Like, you got a sign. Like, we have this wacky kit man <laughs> who does a dance after him. Show me videos and stuff like that. I used to, I used to work with him. I didn't, I didn't realise until like, literally this week that's, that's what he's doing. Obviously, it's not his job. It's not, dance is not his job. I think it is. I think no, it is. I think he gets paid. No, he's a <laughs> kit man, isn't he? They're yeah. going to find him on Strictly. Club sensation. Yeah. Is but it? that's the thing as well. You're saying about a kit man. A kit man at that level was almost un- unheard of. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So, like, actually... The fact the club have got a kit man, the fact they've got a, 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 a pro licensed coach, mm. you know, it's, it's as professional Crazy, as you're trying to do. It's a, before a game, they've got all your kind of uh, isotonic drinks and, you know, after a game, got food laid on for you to like get your pro, like, protein yeah. cars back in. It's just like, it's I'm, Banarama. Sitting there, I'm sitting there going, like, what level would Ben at here? Like, yeah. surely we're in the least. It's, it's sort of Banorama national level, isn't it? That's what sets so. up, you know, Massively. it's certainly Huge. growing. So, it. and that's. But then you get someone like Dougie who dances after the game. <laughs> you do that, but I love yeah. it. Absolutely love it. Because again, that camaraderie between yeah. not just the players but the staff as well, I think that's what they've got there, which I think people don't realise no. is that the whole the cold club is kind of is, is really sticking together, which is great. And I won't ask you about Rick's training sessions, because I actually current club and I don't want to get you in any sort of trouble. But you you know, i when I was manager, I brought things like warm downs in and no, they were like, what the hell is a warm down? Different guy, yeah. Yeah, we're not, we're not doing a warm down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Through your career, has any, any manager ever brought something new to a training session and the, the squad's just gone, nah, mate. Oh, I'll tell you, well, one, in, one in particular, it must have been under, who was it under? I want to say it was Jim, which, which would surprise me if it was. But it started to train at three o'clock. Oh, okay. In yeah. The, yeah. Um, I remember something uh, it, no, being it might said. Be before that. Because uh, yeah, they wanted to line it more with your body Donnelly, being ready on a Saturday. Willie Donnelly wanted to bring it in. <coughs> right, that'd be joke. He was a, he, yeah, so he was assistant money, and I think he was like bang on it, saying that we were having problems. It was a season we didn't really finish too well. It's last uh, season. It's last season. Yeah. yeah, and and he was like, we need to change something. Like the teams that are kind of going ahead of the time, doing sports sciencey stuff, and this that and the other. And Willie Donnelly was was big on kind of okay. the mental side of the game and stuff like psychology, that psychology well. yeah psychology and he was just like you know why don't we why don't we start training at three and you could see all the dads going <laughs> <laughs> three o'clock <laughs> I mean I keep my kids up at three <laughs> why, 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 she's why? not going to be happy with this so uh, it lasted I think it lasted two weeks I think if if that ten days and even they were just like it's not working because I think the problem they had would be some of the um, some of the drinkers <laughs> Would would train, go and have a few beers because oh, they knew dear. they had a recovery in the morning before training. Oh dear! Yeah, so they thought oh, we can't do that. Was it still but, was it still big then drinking when you turned up? Because obviously, in like Ian yeah, Marshall's uh, era, whole different thing. Yeah, it's only so, ten years different, isn't it? Really? So, Blessing. I think I I I was quite naive to it, mm. I was hugely naive to it. Smoking, you know, I I thought that no professional footballer would smoke. And I don't know if you guys like, you know, but not I used to. It, to I used to. Yeah. yeah so, so Alan Lee, didn't he? Didn't he smoke? Alan Lee would have a, have a smoke. Yeah. It's like, a celebration, I think. Yeah. Wasn't it? Most of the, most of the French players would smoke and have a glass of red wine the night, two, okay. three, maybe bottle, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> I would, I would, I would come in and and or like go after track. I'd come in and like they'd be talking about it, and I'd be like, oh, they're not talking about themselves, surely not. And then I'd go into town like with a few, a few of the younger boys, and they're. They'd be like, on oh, a lad just sitting outside of a coffee shop, coffee, fag, like, and I'd be like, going, oh, what are you doing? Why are you, having, why are you smoking? <laughs> wow. Surely, and um, but it's so, it was just a naivety because they would still train, they'd still perform, they'd still be unbelievable. Yeah. But that's just one of the things they would just do. Gosh. It's part of the culture. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, especially the, the continental players, as yeah, you say. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, the drinkers, yeah, the drinking side of it, I think that's still kind of there, but you don't really get so many like Tuesday nights, Tuesday night clubs. No, it's more Saturday night now, and you see it's it, more you know, Saturday night, yeah, going. like lads go like getting together, going to an actual club, like that kind of going to the pub kind yeah. of that era is kind of gone. Yeah. yeah. So I'm really interested to find out how a dressing room deals with that, then with like William, you know, what the management want to bring in. So yeah. do you all have a meeting? Do 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 the senior players speak? For you instead of asking you. Yeah. How does, yeah, sort of. How does yeah. a locker how does a dressing room Normally like like now it's like, like we live in a democratic society, so we like we like everyone put their hands up for this, blah blah blah. Right. And everyone gets their say now. Whereas back then it wasn't it was just a case of the senior ones, four or five senior boys would just be like, 
look, not having it. You know, we're not having it, or this oh, is what I'm going to do. And and you, and you as a young one would just be like, okay, yeah, whatever. Whereas now it's like, yeah, we've got to show show our hands. What do you want to do? Well, should we do this? Or And it's not necessarily, say, a, a manager wants to bring something in. We don't then sit and have a meeting and go, right, what, what are we going to do? Because you just... You do it. You do what the manager wants you to do. It's more, it's more a case of right. Where are we going for our Christmas do? We want to go. Brilliant. <laughs> up for Manchester. For you. <laughs> so, huh. so it's yeah. You back then it was just four or five of the old ones would make the decision. Fair enough. Yeah. And to to just to, to close. Thank you for your time. Quick fire questions. So I want. I want Why are you laughing? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we already discussed the question. I know he's going to be. I want to him. I want instant. Right. No more than two or three seconds to think about it. All okay. right. You can. Uh, develop it, you know, we'd love to hear stories, but can't think about it too long. Okay. Right. So, first one is best captain. Uh, too long. Jason DeVos. <laughs> okay. Legends. Any reason Legends. why Jason DeVos? Because you missed him when he went there. Yeah. Like, he he was the kid, like, Jim like Jim was brilliant. Dean Levington, like, he's, Machine. He's, he's brilliant. But, like, Jason DeVos would be unbelievable without actually doing anything apart from editing it because he'd just pull people in and he'd like pull he'd be like right you get in here you get in here right you tackle it brilliant well done but as soon as he was injured or he went missing like the defence went to went to went to pop so you know, lost the leadership so the, like he's he's kind of talking on the pitch and like he's reading of the game not just his game other people's game like you know he was it's like a Van Dyke kind of Yes. Oh, that's a, oh, a big no, sentence. You're, you're, yeah. not, you're not far off that. Really? For, for that era yeah, of yeah. captaincy, like being able to sort of get other people to do your job. Yeah, yeah. Without but then you making tackles. Without you actually doing yeah, anything yeah. apart from when it did come your way, you're reading it. You know, <laughs> no one's going to win a header against him, no. head on the stick. You know, so, yeah, James. Best man you played under? Carl Robinson. Again, any, any particular reason why he wins the race against Big Joe? Just on, and, just on and off the pitch. Yeah. You know, head of a coach. You know, a co- like his actual sessions were just brilliant never the same kind of session never really do the same but always different sessions um, Mad kept, you, kept you guessing yeah man management was brilliant he, he would always try and tell you a little porky pie here and there just to keep you happy but like he would, he's a way around rotating players right so we'd rotate all the front four so we play four two three one so the four at the back and the two would normally be like set then the other four attackers they would kind of be chopped and changed around a little bit but the way he got around that was he'd pull me in in a meeting before the main meeting to announce the team be like look you're not playing tomorrow he said but get yourself ready because you're playing Tuesday like that so you're kind of in your head you're going right okay he needs me still so he still needs me because then on Tuesday he would never ever go against his word you'd be playing and that was the thing that he that's how he kept you kind of kept sweet. you kept you sweet. So then you wanted your team to win because you knew you were playing Tuesday. You yeah, want yeah. Them, you know. So yeah, Carl. Worst ground to play at. But say it again. Worst ground to play at. So the worst ground you've ever played at, <laughs> and for why? Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, I know I've taken ages. Long. This is I know. Oh. Worst ground. We need some press up. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> do you know what? Do you know what I'll say? Oh. Brighton's old ground, the with The with oh jeez. Oh, do you know, do you know, do you know why? I enjoyed it whilst I was down there, but the racing track around it was like so bad, like you couldn't <laughs> you couldn't even see the fans, let alone hear yeah, them. Yeah. So yeah, probably the width. And worst ground for for being barracked at? Would that be Millwall, as you said earlier? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mill. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's probably most people's answers, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. probably. Uh, yeah. You know, the first ones I've asked. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that took so long. No, you're hard. fine. It's hard. It's hard because there's there's a few rubbish ones. <laughs> <laughs> Best ground you've played at. In Six, terms of oh, I know away. situation, is yeah. it like you know, wow? St James's or? Park. Okay, is that because of the? We played the the um, it wasn't the Youth Cup. It was a, it was another. No, it was the Youth Cup. And I was fourteen. Was playing wow. with, and I was playing. I was in the squad for. Um, it was. It must have been the other seventeens or something like that. Right. Yeah, it was the youth cup, and uh, I came on for twenty minutes, and I just remember walking out because when you walk out of St James Park, you got the small stand in front of you. Yeah. So you walk out and you're just like it's like Portman Road. Is that it? Yeah. It's exactly. sort of background it's easy. behind you, and then you literally do that, and you go, "Oh my Jesus Christ!" <laughs> and Brilliant. it just goes higher and higher, and it was wow. just like a week at the knees. 
yeah brilliant wow. amazing stadium I didn't, didn't you say that uh, what no. did you think I said? Well, some, I, I didn't know. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. I didn't know. St. James's Park. Yeah, I know. I I never played there as a, as a pro. It was it was there, but it was that feeling of walking out, thinking, no, oh, it's not that bad. Oh, yeah, God, that's, that's, a long, <laughs> that's a long, long way up the top, isn't it? Yeah, 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 about fourteen flights of stairs up in the top oh, part. Yeah, Christ. Best teammate. Uh, yeah, Louis probably. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I ruined him for six years. He's a quirky character. Any I've got, qu- only got one story. Go on. I've only got one story. <laughs> right, so... Make him blush. He, um, well, for starters, he always used to put Vaseline in his hair rather than actual hair products. Because it just... What? His hair, yeah, his hair wouldn't move. Uh, he's such a, <laughs> what? He's such a weirdo. Right. <laughs> Vaseline? I've got, I've got two stories, actually. First story was um, a away game. And uh, he was like, I'm going to go and um, go and have a shave. I was like, all right. So he goes into the toilet and has a shave. And I was heading out of the, heading out of the room and I looked in... I, like, I can't hear like a shave, you know, like a kind of yeah. shave. I think, what the hell's he doing? And he's in the mirror, but I could just hear like a snip, snip, right? Right. He's having, he's cutting his beard with a pair of physio scissors, <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't have a full beard, so he's there and he's just going snip like that, snip, like, <laughs> like individual hairs. And I got it on video and everything, and he just looked at me without, as if it was normal. and just went, right. <laughs> <laughs> and the second story was we was um, we'd been promoted at, at League One and we was in Marbella and um, he he had booked to go on a stag do um, but it overlapped the trip to Marbella so he was like boys I'm going to be there a day late and I was just we was like don't worry about it we're all high spirits were high coming don't worry about it so he turned up a day late but he felt he was on catch up so he just and he was he's a big drinker like, and he now, just, we? yeah and he just he he put it back all day and he was an absolute wreck <laughs> and I had to room with him and I've seen some things that he's done in the room which I'll, I can't go into oh, but like he's, he's, he, was, he was horrendous and we got back to the room and it was say about six o'clock and we were going out we was getting ready to go out again at like seven half seven there was a quick turnaround right quick shower get changed back down in the bar. <laughs> And he went to me like, oh, I can't, I can't do it, like, it's gone. <laughs> and, I, and I went, Louis, do you want me to, like, wake you, like, just before we're leaving? He was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, right, OK. So I was OK. So I'm not a big, big drinker, but like, I, I was OK. So I um, had a shower, got myself sorted, half seven, but I'm tiptoeing out of the room because I'm just thinking, like, I don't really want him to come. He's an absolute wreck. Like, it was, he was horrendous. Like, so I said to him, I went to him, trying to come out no alright and just walked out and just left him right, so he's in the room just like dead to the world and I went downstairs and they were like where's Louis he's like he's upstairs and I was like, oh thank god for that so we're getting we were sort of waiting for everyone else to get ready and we're just walking out the door and he comes running around the corner like from the by it's alright boys I made it we've all gone Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> and he and he made it. He made it out, and we went. And he was fine after that. But he was just when he's bad, he's, he's bad. bad. Yeah, we've all just, got that one friend. Didn't we? Oh, we've all got that one friend. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Was like TV on standby. Only lemonade, so they wouldn't know. Absolutely love him for it. It's like TV on standby when he gets going. Right, uh, worst teammate. Worst teammate. Worst teammate. Oh. All the hard questions here on the podcast. <laughs> all the hard. Worst teammate. I'll fill the gap where you keep thinking. It's fine. Um, Can be any reason. Messy in the room. Not team player. Bad at ping pong. Anything you like. I don't know. That's hard. <laughs> who, who, who's the worst roommate then on a away day? Well, look. Probably Dean Lunan again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dean, this was another funny story. For, for being the worst teammate, he used to do some just random things so we, we used to eat like I'm a chocolate I right? love chocolate right. right? and I know it's not the most professional thing to say you don't look like you do so yeah, I know like... look after myself apart from chocolate right so before an away game he would we would just stock up on chocolate right and we was we was doing well that season so we, we just thought right we've got over two bags of this two bags of that whatever it was anyway one one uh, one away trip we had a bag of magic stars right and he loved magic stars right <laughs> which is the most random chocolate yeah. anyway love magic stars and I was like, right, when are you going to open those bloody magic stars? So he's, he popped them open, but he's, as he's opened it, he's dropped them everywhere, like all on the floor, right? But the carpet in the hotel room was stars. <laughs> <laughs> so no, no word of a lie, it took us about an hour and a half to pick up every magic star. And we still ate them. Two right, yeah, two right. <laughs> so yeah, for that, ah, oh, for yeah, he's, he he's the best character. and worst, the best and worst, Dino. Love like it. 
Toughest defender to play against? Probably Jason. Yeah. Couldn't get a sniff Sorry. in training. Yeah, uh, look, in, in training, yeah, stuff like that. Toughest toughest one to play. Oh, played against played against a few. There was actually, I don't remember his name, but I remember playing playing Brentford away. And I used to get quite a bit, like, in the ear, because I was a young player. They used to try and intimidate me, yeah. but I, I would never rise to it because I was never one to sort of answer back and stuff like that. So I'd just get on with it. But there was, I can't remember who it was. Oh, it's going to annoy the hell out of me. I'll tell you, actually, who was the guy, who was the guy at QPR, um, big centre-back? Clint Hill? No. Uh, Robbie? Clint Hill, no. Big, um, big centre-half. Oh, oh, I don't know if Tom Head. Tom Head. But anyway, the guy, the guy at Brentford, forget not, it. Again. Not a newer, it's uh, more recent, No, isn't it? no, a little bit older. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so um, oh, that's, that's one for Google. That's the problem with Google nowadays, isn't it? You just yeah, Google it. Yeah. You'll find it straight away. So yeah. that's yeah. Titus Bramble, right? Yeah. Uh, in reverse, obviously. And he said, of all the strikers he's played against, Emil Heskey. Oh, right. You see? Because okay. you knew, apparently, walking off the you field, you'd played against yeah, him. Because right. he was like a, a brick wall. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And he did, yeah. And he did, you So I just thought I'd get the striker's perspective as who was the <laughs> toughest defender you couldn't quite get sniff against, you know? Yeah. Or you thought, oh, no, I'm playing, I'm playing them next week. On my hamstring feels a bit bit tired. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, there's, there's. I'm trying. The name, the name's going for me now because anyone stick out like trash talker. So you, you'd know. That was the guy at Brentford. And I yeah. forget. I forget his name. And he was, he was a senior. He was a senior pro as well. He was a bit, bit of a legend. And I forget his bloody name. But he, he was getting in my ear massively. But like all about like, like what he's basically going to do to me. So every time I've got the ball, I'm going to snap your legs. I'm going to break all the break this. But it was just. It was constant, and even though I won't answer him back, he was still going. And actually, like I just thought, yeah, at some point you are, you are going to break my legs, because like, uh, you, you've convinced me. You've actually yeah, convinced me. Right? Yes. So, like, so you've convinced me. You're going to. So yeah, I'm kind of scared now. <laughs> yeah. So, so, it worked, then. so yeah, it worked. Yeah, and, I, and I'll have to again. Yeah, we have to Google one, it off. One, one for Google, but um, my brain's going ten or a dozen. One, the one at the one at QPR, yeah. the centre half at QPR, because he. It, I remember, but I remember a story about him. He was playing against he was playing against Jordan Rhodes because I knew Jordan Rhodes obviously again through through Ipswich. Through Ipswich, yeah. And he he was playing against him, um, and this is what made me worried about playing against him. But he he walked out of the change room, Jordan, and this is where when he was really doing well at Huddersfield. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, on fire, wasn't he? He, he, goes, was, he walked yeah. out of the change room, and this guy. <laughs> He was waiting for him outside the change room. And Jordan, I don't know if you've ever come across Jordan at your time, one of the quietest kids you'll ever come across. Yeah. And he literally waited for Jordan, he used to come out towards the end, and he just said, I'm going to eat you alive today. Oh dear, oh dear. And Jordan said, literally, just felt like his backside was already kind of loosening up. Because he just Christ. thought, oh my God, I'm, I'm trying to Google this centre half, because uh, it's going to play on me now. Yeah. Uh, well, ask me another one whilst we look Best dresser. Best dresser? Yeah. Probably me. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Imagine, a bit of a best dresser. dresser? No, definitely not me. Uh, no. Do you know what? Samir Carruthers used to come in some sort of strange gear, but he used to pull it off. Really? Samir, Samir used to play yeah. MK Dons. MK Dons, yeah, good player. Yeah, he used to, yeah, he used to come in some... Player. Jordan Spence, probably. Do you remember Jordan Spence? Yeah, right yeah, about yeah, us, yeah. Right? yeah. Oh, of course, yeah, he was here, wasn't he? He was a good... Yeah, but he loved himself. Like, as in, see that on Instagram I think yeah, if, he was always, cho- uh, if he was chocolate he would have ate himself so. <laughs> worst yeah. dresser worst dresser um, probably Dean Lewin then <laughs> he's <laughs> had a right batter isn't he no only because like I don't think he washed his clothes let alone when he bought any new ones like he just he'd turn, he'd turn up he'd be like Louis what it's like you've worn that three days on the back it's like yeah I know but it's just on my sofa ready to go in it or so yeah he was he was pretty bad he was pretty bad and of course the standard two oh no stop hang on Dave Martin Dave Martin right used to have the worst clothes I've ever seen in my life really yeah combination wise were just horrendous like wearing a pair of like Gucci shoes with a pair of tracksuit bottoms (laughs) sounds like (laughs) me really not Gucci shoes but just really bad dress sense yeah I mean yeah but he liked his designer like his designer gear so he'd wear a pair of... Just couldn't put it together. Yeah, just <laughs> then couldn't put it together. Like, what are you doing, Dave? Like, absolutely horrendous. So yeah, Dave Martin, sorry. And of course the Tim Lovejoy. Oh, no. Longest in the shower. Well, I've been waiting for this one, because you asked me right at the start. Probably Ben Hamer. Fair enough. Yeah, he used to yeah. spend a long, long time. What's your show, Danny? <laughs> I've got to find this centre-half now. And I'm just going to ask you one last question, because it comes from the top of my head. If I gave you a blank bit of paper... Yeah. 
and I said improve the game for young players coming through how would you do that what because obviously you you've been through the system yeah. you've been on loan you've been at different clubs how would you because obviously young players and their development is something that's huge in this country the international team hasn't won, hasn't won anything in a long time there's a blank bit of paper you've got unlimited resources having been a player how would unlimited you unlimited resources <laughs> yeah having been a player how, you know, if I have said to you Dean uh, improve it oh, improve the academy just improve the pathway for players how would yeah. you how would you do it that's, it's that million dollar question yeah, that everyone yeah, tries to answer it, because I think what they're doing now they're making it so uh, like I was talking to a few coaches and obviously something I want to go into with the younger players especially and stuff like that and actually a lot of the things they have to do outside of actual being on the grass is incredible you know their job is actually not just being a coach it's being a teacher it's yeah. being a a dad, doing, a friend, a, a dad, a friend. Uh, he's doing all the paperwork for everything, and it's it's becoming too kind of too much about what actually is going on off the pitch, let alone that on the grass. You know, yeah. so just spend more time on the grass, however that may be. I know you got to be careful with maybe overtraining, burning people out, stuff like that. But that wasn't the case when when I was coming no. through. You know, in that golden era. I remember they built they built the training ground. I don't know if it's still there. But essentially, they just built a, a wooden box with a door in it, and one one side side of the so there's four walls. On one side was slightly higher wall. In the middle was a circle, and with a door. That was it. And their point was like, at every spare minute you got, I want to see you in that box. And it was just smashing balls against the walls, and you got to keep you got to keep in the circle. How many how many times do you need the wall in a minute? Wow. How many times can you chip it at that 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 higher bit? You know, and then get it back in the circles. You got to hit that, and get it back in. How many times you can do it? Just left foot, right foot. You know, so you talk about Ipswich being a technical club, like good passing team. It was just breeded to like just go in and do stuff every yeah. minute of every day. Just practice something. And I think if you're going to put resources in it, into anything, put it on the grass. Mm. You know, get get players out on the grass as much as you can because that's the way you're going to improve. And how do you feel? The under twenty three setup now is different mm. to the reserves. Do you feel that's beneficial? Would you look to change that? Is that helping or hindering young players actually? Yeah, it's. I don't really know too much enough. I don't know enough about mm -hmm. about the under twenty three side of things as I probably should do. It's um, the new reserves, isn't it? Basically, essentially. Yeah, you know, I mean, remember when I was growing up, you perhaps watch Portsmouth versus Ipswich. You get Stylian Todorov try out. Yeah. Um, you know, or back Come back in for or something. Or, yeah. Whereas these days, you don't you only allow possibly two over 23s in the squad yeah so is that are you kind of marooned after 23 yeah and then it's like well you're on your own yeah I think the reserves were, were, were huge well it was huge at Ipswich I know that much you know mm. coming back from injury first team players you know go playing two or three games in the reserves first and it wasn't like oh, I don't want to play in the reserves it was kind of just that's your, that was your path that's what you done yeah. you just, you just back, to get back in the first team you've got to make sure that you get fit in the reserves first so players can't can't do that and I know they try and put games on for certain players that might be a, a really important player and they're like well we'll get a game sort yeah. of arranged behind closed doors sort of thing behind yeah. closed doors for that particular player or um, two players but reserves that's what it was yeah. so I don't know enough about 23s to start saying oh they shouldn't be doing it no, no. Over. but yeah it, it does probably hamper a few players because how do they get their match fitness yeah do you want me to try and find this defender? Yes, what please. Do we'll do it after the show. But thank you <laughs> so much, Dave. It's been a real pleasure. It really has. Thank you so yeah, much. It's been quite Don't forget to have a Don't forget to take us for so much. Okay. All right. I'll do my best. All right. Starting today. Yeah.